Welcome to Nashville, Tennessee and Nissan Stadium, the home of the Tennessee Titans. It's Saturday and that means college football. Today we've got two programs on the rise under new head coaches. It's a state of Kentucky grudge match as Louisville takes on West Kentucky in the Music City next on Stadium. Nothing but blue skies in the Music City this afternoon in Nashville, Tennessee, at the home of the Tennessee Titans, the Louisville Cardinals, and Western Kentucky Hilltoppers in an exciting matchup here today. Welcome up to the broadcast booth alongside Jordan Palmer. I'm Josh Chappelle. Thanks so much for being with us. And Jordan, these are two programs which are in very similar spots in their rebuilds. Yeah, they are. They both have head coaches that are in their first year here. They're building the program the same way. It's all about culture, treating guys the right way, and playing competitive football. Well, Western Kentucky has struggled a bit on the ground the last couple of seasons, but through two games, Gage Walker has been fantastic taking advantage of his increased role on offense. Yeah, Gage Walker, a year ago, he's playing defensive back. They move him to running back, and in the first two games this year, he's got 252 yards on the ground, and he's coming off back-to-back 100-yard -back games. On the other side, we found out before the game for Louisville that they would be without their starting quarterback, Jawan Pass. And so the start today goes to their backup, Malik Cunningham, which means the brunt of the load offensively will rely heavily on Javian Hawkins. Yeah, Malik Cunningham is a backup, but he played in almost every game last year. He also led the Cardinals in rushing. But it'll be Javian Hawkins. This guy is explosive playmaker, and he is also coming off back-to-back 100-yard -back games. With a backup in the game, Cardinals are going to look to pound it on the ground early and often. These two renewed their rivalry last season for the first time in 20 years. It came down all the way to the end, a 20-17 Louisville win. Should be a fun one today from Nashville, Louisville, and Western Kentucky coming up next. Back in Nashville as Western Kentucky takes the field, even though it's a neutral site, it's a home game for the Hilltoppers against the Louisville Cardinals out of the ACC. The Toppers fans are ready. The Cardinals fans are ready. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you. And Jordan, as we get a look at these two first-year head coaches in just a moment, at these two programs, Scott Satterfield, a fantastic run at App State on the left. And then you've got Tyson Helton, who comes back to Western Kentucky, where he was a record-setting offensive coordinator in 2014 and 15. Well, you got one coach and Coach Satterfield who all he's really done is won. You know, he's been at App State for over a decade. He's won three Sun Belt titles. He had three different 10 win seasons. And then you got Coach Tyson Helton, who's developed and been around a lot of quarterbacks who are from Sam Darnold to JT Daniels, a lot of guys who've, who've had big careers. And, and uh, two guys that come with different backgrounds, but they're building the programs the exact same way. Leading up to this game all week, we heard about culture. We heard about treating the guys the way they want to be treated. And apparently that's different than the way it's been done. And these players are completely bought in on both sides. And we heard a lot of the same things from these coaches uh, and from the players as well all week. And it goes without saying that a huge part of being a successful college football program is getting the kids to buy in, as you said, and just enjoy being around the facility and each other. As you see Stu Holt getting his special teams group ready to go. Louisville will kick off to start today's game. And as we mentioned in the open, this series goes all the way back to 1922. It's the 33rd all-time meeting. Louisville leads it 20 to 12. The Cardinals have won 10 straight. It's been a while since the Hilltoppers have beaten the Cardinals. They came oh so close last year, falling 20 to 17. Yeah, it really came down last year to a, a missed field goal. And uh, Louisville was able to, to hold on to the win. So. The series is lopsided, and, and I know that these are different programs. They're running different schemes on both sides of the ball, uh, but but there's there's a, there's a lot of confidence on this Hilltopper team coming in, just the way that that game came down to the wire uh, just a year ago. As Garland LaFrance, the sophomore out of New Orleans, back to receive the kick for Western Kentucky, and Blanton Creaky, the southpaw kicker, will send it deep. Louisville one and one. They dropped the opening weekend to number nine Notre Dame 35-17. They bounced back with a 42-0 win last week against Eastern Kentucky. The Hilltoppers one and one as well after a big road win to start conference play at FIU last week. And we're underway from Nashville. Yeah. 
And Stephen Duncan of the Western Kentucky offense will start first and 10 at the 22. Yeah, and Stephen Duncan, just watching him pregame, this guy looks the part. He's all of six foot four, 230 pounds, and, uh, and he's going to be the heart and soul of this offense. LaFrance on the return. And so we'll see a much improved, at least through two games, Louisville defense against a Western Kentucky offense that I would describe as inconsistent through the first two games. Turnovers have been an issue as Duncan starts in the shotgun on first and ten. Got hit as he threw, and it lands a no-man's land around the 30-yard line, brings up second down. Yeah, and a big story today is going to be the pass rush. Louisville, just being in the conference that they're in, uh, and, and defensively, especially up front, looked really good against Notre Dame. But one of the strengths of this Western Kentucky offense is they actually return not just five starters up front on the offensive line, but 60 starts last year. That's one of only two schools in the entire country that do that. So definite strength, and we're going to be watching that matchup versus Louisville front. Yeah, Oregon, the only other school to return all five starters on the offensive line. Duncan underneath, and it's caught for a short gain to the 26-yard line by Jacor Pearson, the redshirt junior out of Fort Lauderdale. Had his first career touchdown a week ago at Florida International down in South Florida. A little homecoming for Pearson last week. It's a gain of four, and it sets up third and six for the tops on offense on their opening drive. WKU was five of 13 last week on third down. Duncan has his man and has a first down over the middle of the 37-yard line. It's Quinn Jernigan, just his second catch of the season, and a big third down catch for the Tops. Yeah, and this is what the Western Kentucky offense wants to do. They want to keep things simple and keep the reads in front of Duncan as much as possible. Uh, really good job, first third down conversion, confidence builder. Here's Walker's first touch of the day, and Walker takes it out across the 40 to the 41. Yeah, and the theme of this offense has been really the turnover. Uh, the turnover margin, uh, Duncan, he looks the part. He can make every throw. We're going to see him drive the ball over the field. But in back-to-back -back games, two picks, both games. And when you look at the tape and when you talk to some of the people around the program, they weren't necessarily forced errors. They were kind of unforced errors. So really, decision-making, pre-snap decision-making is going to be huge for Duncan today. Second and six. They set up the wide receiver screen to Jernigan, but it's read well by Louisville. Sturgill makes the stop right away. Maybe a yard on that, if anything, and it's third down once again for Western Kentucky. And Brian Ellis, offensive coordinator here for Western Kentucky, he's been around the block. He, he played the position. He was at SC the last two years. Coach Sam Darnold, Coach JT Daniels, he really understands how to build momentum early in a game, spreading the field, quick throws, also taking shots down the field, get the defense moving sideline to sideline, and then being able to put yourself in a position to convert on third down. Third and four, Duncan. Behind his man over the middle, he was looking for Pearson. Duncan got knocked down as he threw again. And the Hilltoppers have to punt on their opening drive. Yeah, almost every throw so far in this game, the quarterback, Steve Duncan, has been under duress. And in the second part of that is that we've kind of seen receivers in the same spot. That's the second time we've seen two receivers in a similar area. So spreading the ball around the field is great. But you also have to have great uh, spatial awareness and great separation by these receivers. That'll be something to watch as... Uh, the Hilltoppers continue on offense. Haggerty, the Australian, averaging over 50 yards a punt. That's second in the country. Rajay Burns back deep to receive. Well done by the Australian. Out of bounds at the 18-yard line. And that's where we'll see Malik Cunningham in this Cardinals offense. For the first time, scoreless early in the first quarter. Welcome back to Nashville, 12.36 to go in the first quarter, and Tyson Helton, the, the head coach of Western Kentucky. You see what he says about this renewed rivalry between Louisville and Western Kentucky. He wants to play one of the Blue Bloods from Kentucky every single season. Yeah, and I don't blame him. Louisville, program rebuilding Kentucky, they've been able to build it the last few years, but great opportunity for Western Kentucky to be able to get in the mix from a recruiting standpoint and from a competing competition standpoint. Malik Cunningham rolls out on his first play from scrimmage, getting the start in place of the injured Jawan Pass. And he cuts it up the middle, but Dolan gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Yeah, Cunningham, a dynamic runner. 
last year in this game. Had 129 yards on the ground. He gets in space. He's a problem. First touch of the day for Hawkins. And around the left side he goes. Out of bounds at the 23. Picks up five. And just like that, it's third down for the Cardinals. Yeah, and these are the situations that the Cardinals want to avoid. Those third and medium to third to longs. If the emphasis of your offense is ground and pound, run the ball, create some space for the running backs to be able to get into, uh, the difficulty is when you're asking Cunningham to drop back and throw and find, uh, find receivers down the field. Great screen thrower. Great diagonal thrower, but down the field is where they've had, he's had trouble. Louisville 42% on third down through the first two games. And they change the play at the line of scrimmage. Cunningham, the red shirt sophomore. Play clock down to one. And a lot of discombobulation there from the Louisville offense. And for the first time, we'll hear from Justin Elliott and this Conference USA officiating crew. Snap infraction. Offense, number 59. Five yard penalty, still third down. Jordan, is an early penalty like that just a matter of Malik Cunningham not getting a lot of reps? He was hurt in fall camp. Obviously, he's the backup, so different cadence than Jawan Pass. Yeah, it's a different cadence, and you know, on the first third down of the game, emotions are running high. You got to evaluate what's happening on the defense, shape, make a decision, and then give that information out to 10 other guys. And when you're the backup and don't get reps, it doesn't happen as, as smoothly as it would with your starter. They're trying to set up the screen. Cunningham trying to escape, and he goes down behind the line. Jawan Jones, the red shirt sophomore. Already his third sack of the season. Yeah, and this is just a great play by this Hillpopper defense, sensing screen, somebody takes away the back, and then there's three other guys right there waiting for him, and even as good of a runner as Malik Cunningham is, it's tough to make more than one guy miss in the backfield. So after scoring on its opening drive in each of the first two games, Louisville will go three and out on this one, and they're forced to punt. Mason King, fifth year senior from Louisville. Western Kentucky should have some good field position. As the fair catch is made by Clayton Bush, the freshman, at the 46. Second possession for Western Kentucky coming up next, and it's all thanks to this sack from Jawan Jones, his third of the season, still scoreless early in the first quarter. Western Kentucky about to go back on offense. No score. Louisville and the Hilltoppers. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you as you get a look at Lucky Jackson, one of our key players today for Western Kentucky. He wasn't targeted on that first drive, but he is the go-to guy for Stephen Duncan. Yeah, when they want to push the ball down the field, they're going to be looking for Lucky Jackson. He's got over 1,600 career yards and nine touchdowns here, and he's their playmaker. He's a redshirt senior, and he's the guy that can do it all. Rajay Burns on defense for Louisville, a converted linebacker, or excuse me, a converted corner moving to linebacker this season. Six foot, 197 pounds at linebacker. He also returns punts, but Scott Satterfield loves his speed. Yeah, they're just trying to find a place to put him on the field. He can really do it all. Almost a Jabril Peppers type athlete. Uh, transfer from Ohio State, and they found a spot for him. They like him at linebacker. So first and ten for the Hilltoppers. Duncan gives to Walker, looking for some space, and he finds some in the Cardinal territory to the 48 yard line. And that's what's gonna be so important today for this Hilltopper offense is really it's first down, getting positive yardage, four, five, six yards on first down. Not necessarily breaking the game open, but making sure that up front they're getting a hat on the hat. Like I said, we've got five returning starters on offensive line. Get, the, get Gage Walker in space and get positive yards on first down. False start. And then to go ahead Offense. and follow that up, Number 48. avoid penalties Five -yard penalty. you're in a good Still second first down. down and second down situation. These are the ones that kill the drives. When you're a run-heavy offense uh, that can go ahead and pound the ball in between the tackles, and you get these unforced error penalties, putting yourself instead of second and four, second and nine, these are the deals where it makes it really tough for offensive coordinator Brian Ellis and quarterback Stephen Duncan to be able to dial up and manufacture uh, chunk yardage plays in the pass game. Really difficult to take one step forward and two steps back, and it's going to be the number one thing they want to eliminate throughout this game. Duncan trying to go to Gage Walker. Walker wasn't ready for it. He might be a little lucky there it wasn't picked off. Yeah, he was, and just shows you. They're just trying to get the ball to Gage Walker any way that they can. 
a guy who hasn't really had any receptions uh, for as often as he's touching the ball out of the backfield. Uh, but as we said, this is a converted defensive back, and uh, they're just looking to get the ball in his hands any way possible. And here they are on third long, and not the situations they want to be in today, but they do have the firepower at wide out to be able to push the ball down the field. Louisville rushes for Duncan, hit, and he goes down. Monty Montgomery, the Hutchinson Community College transfer, the sophomore, puts a halt to this Hilltopper drive. Yeah, and they've just created a free runner here. Uh, one of the things that you look for in this Louisville defense is they're an odd front, meaning they only have three down linemen up front, and they've got four linebackers behind them. We heard all week they're going to mix coverages up. They're going to rotate late. But on third and long, it's going to be the exotic blitzes. Got defenders walking around and coming from everywhere. And that wasn't a massive mismatch. That was just uh, they won with confusion. And they didn't necessarily bring more than they could block. But that Louisville defense winning with confusion. Defensive coordinator Court Dennison dialing one up on the on the first third and long of the game. John Haggerty had that one go off the side of his foot. So great starting field position on the next Louisville drive. 9.03 to go in the first quarter. Still looking for the game's first score. Yeah, these third downs, the story of the day. Third down, winning with confusion. Defensive coordinator, Court Dennison. In this situation, both these linemen are kicking out. We've got three defenders, we've got three linemen. The tackle has to see it and call it out. Unfortunately, we got both guys coming up field. And then Monty Montgomery coming back inside, unreleased, uh, un, uh, uh, nobody's scanning for him, miscommunication with a back releasing out of the backfield, not scanning backside. That's as easy as it gets. Again, not overpowering them up front with pass rush, just winning with confusion. Offensive line for Western Kentucky is going to have to communicate better in this as this game goes on. Louisville had just 11 sacks all of last year. That's already the ninth of this season as Cunningham on first down takes it across the 45 to the 46. After the 20 yard punt gave the Cardinals some great starting field position at their own 42. Darden with the tackle on Cunningham. Eight sacks in the first two games against Notre Dame and Eastern Kentucky. Already got their first today, and it forced a three and out. Now they're trying to answer. Cunningham in some trouble. Dancing around in the pocket, now rolls out to his right. And he shoved out of bounds for a loss. Clay Davis, the one hounding him. And this is one of those plays that just comes from experience. Malik Cunningham, he's a very confident runner. He's 6'1", he's around 200 pounds, he's fast, and he's had success running the ball. But it's that right there on the sideline. Throw it away. Don't take the loss. When you're talking about third down, difference of two and three yards changes what plays you have available on your call sheet. It's Kyle Bailey, actually, who is providing the pressure. He's coming off a career high 13 tackles against FIU last Offside. week. Offside. Defense. Number 60. Five yard penalty. Third down. And these are the types of plays for head coach Tyson Helton that you lose sleep over. It's the unforced errors. And when you come into a new program and you're instilling this culture and you're trying to get discipline and you want great communication, a lot of times you measure how well that's going based off of the unforced errors, not the pass interference and the holds, but the pre-snap pe penalties. On third down, they run the option. Cunningham, it's going to be close. Devin Key came up from his safety spot to make the tackle and this will depend on the spot, and it is a first down for Louisville. Yeah, and Devin Key's one of those key players, versatile defender, he's played multiple positions, and he is a physical player. Coming up, loves to hit. And Tutu Atwell is a guy we haven't seen get involved yet, but he's dangerous in space. He's done a bunch of stuff for this Louisville offense. Had a great career so far, and they're gonna look to get him involved. Scott Satterfield compares him to T.Y. Hilton. Nice. Vivian Hawkins takes it off left tackle for the 42 yard line. Clayton Bush made the stop. Satterfield, of course, the offensive coordinator for T.Y. Hilton at Florida International. And just an off tackle here, getting a hat on the hat and falling forward again. Positive yards on first down, trying to get to second and medium is so big when you're a run first offense. Under seven minutes to play in this first quarter, still no score. Louisville driving. Hawkins the carry. Tried to stiff arm. 
but picked up the first down anyways. Something to watch here, too, is you run the ball effectively on first and second down, you're going to force the defense. As we look here at this defense, they've got eight guys in the box. They have everybody coming down to try and keep the running back between the tackles, not letting him get out flanks, and also stuff the middle. It's going to start to open up one-on-one -on -one matchups outside for these receivers. And backup quarterback or not, Louisville has some explosive playmakers outside. First throw of the day for Cunningham is complete. Just shy of a first down, brings up second and short. Yeah, and this is a perfect example of that. Getting a one-on-one -on -one matchup outside with Malik Cunningham, getting his first start in a while. These are the types of throws you want. The receiver in front of you, coming back, down his original stem. Nothing crossed the field, nothing too deep. Just get those confidence-building throws. You want your quarterback 60, 70, 80% early in the game, feeling good about himself. So as you get in these third and longs, they end up giving Louisville the first down. Cunningham on the keeper. Picks up close to another first down. By the way, that was Seth Dawkins who made the catch on the last play. And now Louisville inside the red zone with a chance to get on the scoreboard first. Second down and short upcoming. Yeah, when you're in second and short, the entire playbook is open to you. Running the ball makes sense. Taking a shot at the end zone makes sense. Very, very important from Lee Cunningham to make a great decision right now and not force anything. Kept it on the option, falls over a defender and picks up the first down to the 15. We knew Cunningham was fast, but I didn't realize he liked contact this much. He doesn't necessarily <laughs> need to run somebody over here. This is just him choosing to hit the hit stick. Uh, physical young runner and excited to see him get in the open field and also enjoying him bringing on some contact. That's Hawkins who goes in motion. The handoff, Hassan Hall left side. He's spun down inside the 10. That's Hall's first carry, and he's down to the nine. You know, when we talked to Scott Satterfield, they expected Hassan Hall to be the lead running back again this year, but it was Javian Hawkins who impressed so much as you see Hall pick up a good chunk there. Yeah, and Hassan Hall, I mean, he's had 26 carries so far this season. Seven of them have been for over 10 yards. So this is their home run hitter. Like we said, coming into camp, he's their starting running back. It's just been the emergence of J.B. and Hawkins switching from defensive back to running back, and they have a two-headed monster in Louisville, which is going to really help, not just in this game, but his conference play heads on. Tenth play of the drive. They go to Atwell around the edge, and Atwell finds the end zone. Touchdown, Louisville. When you run the ball that well and you have as much misdirections happening, it's so difficult for the defense to keep contain on the jet sweep. We heard Coach Satterford, Coach Satterfield refer to him as reminding him of T.Y. Hilton. Part of that is his speed. Part of that is he's 5'9", 153 pounds. A little guy, but dangerous in space. Jet sweep, faking the handoff, giving the defense so many different looks, having to stop the ball run between the tackles. And when you do that, you can get one of your speedsters in space, and Louisville was able to do that. Creaky knocks through the extra point. It's a nine-yard touchdown pass to Atwell. A little shovel forward, and Atwell has his second touchdown reception of the season. And Cunningham leads this Louisville offense down the field. Ten plays, 58 yards, and a little under five minutes. Yeah, did a great job. They got four, five, six yards every time on first down. They were the benefit of a pre-snap penalty by the defense. We were able to get Cunningham dropped back, hitting a 10-yard stop route to his left. Positive play, another first down yardage play. And then when you have three guys in the backfield the way they did multiple times on that drive, jet sweep, shovel pass, where you want to do it, that's somebody coming across the field. And it is just hard to be able to stop the run and keep contained, particularly when it's somebody with 2-2 at 12's speed that he has. And Scott Satterfield coming in this year from App State did such a good job there. And you talk to a lot of people around this program, and all they say is how much different the general feel is. Kids love being around each other. They love being at the facility. And there was a lot of things they did in the offseason. They did a team bowling experience. They did paintball as well. Everybody involved, and you might not think as an outsider that that's all that important, but the bonding that takes place with things like this, and you can speak to that, Jordan, as a former player, it's hugely important to building a program. Yeah, I think everybody who straps on a helmet on Saturday or Sunday, or Friday night even, they want to win. <laughs> they want things to go well. They want to have success. But not everybody who straps on a helmet completely buys into the program, and it appears that that's what's happening here at Louisville, and, and it's, it's for sure the case what happened at App State for that long, and Louisville's the beneficiary of it. 
Satterfield spent six seasons as the head coach at Appalachian State, won three straight Sun Belt titles. And his team is out to a 7-0 lead with 4.18 to go in the first quarter. And what's so interesting, too, about that drive in Scott Satterfield historically loves to run the football. Going back to his time at App State, he had 42 and a half rush attempts per game. And that was a 10-play drive. Really just one traditional pass to Dawkins. The second pass on the touchdown was a little shovel pass forward. We talk about discipline and all that other stuff. The penalties have improved as well for Louisville. It's all encompassing what's changed there already in just two games. Western Kentucky trying to answer. Jernigan on the pitch and catch. Shy of the 30-yard line he's brought down. Yes, yeah, similar to the ball that we saw Cunningham complete. 10-yard stop route. Keeping the throws right in front of his face. I mean, for Stephen Duncan, like we said, I mean, we were walking around on the field. <laughs> this guy looks bigger than a lot of guys who play on Sundays. He can make every throw. It's just been, the problems have just been decision-making, and when you isolate a receiver like that, you take the decision out of it. Walker picks up a couple on second down and six, and so third down and manageable upcoming for this Hilltopper offense. They picked up one first down on the opening drive, went three and out on the second possession. Let's see what happens here on third and four at the 31. You know, I'm a former quarterback and, and trained quarterbacks, and so when I'm watching a game like this, my eyes naturally go, you know, go to the quarterback. They go to what's happening on defense, and one of the things that we've seen so far on third down is defenders walking around, not with their foot, and that's what we're looking at right now. Trying to win with confusion, a lot of movement by these pass rushers. Duncan delivers over the middle, and it's caught for a first down to the 40-yard line. That's Jacor Pearson with another grab. Western Kentucky now two for four on third down. And really only bringing three rushers right there, but Brian Ellis, offensive coordinator for Western Kentucky, just calling call something to get the ball out of Duncan's hand quick. New set of downs here with first and 10. Duncan, five of eight for 30 yards so far. Quick pass out to the right. Jackson bobbled it, then caught it, and he's brought down for no gain. Chandler Jones right on it. Yeah, again, just trying to take the pass rush out of the game, getting rid of the ball as quick as possible. But even right there, accuracy is so important. You look at these little tiny one-step screens. If you put that, that was just a little high and a little outside, it makes the receiver raise up just a little bit to the naked eye, to the casual fan. It looks like the receiver bobbled it. For a quarterback, got to be on his upfield shoulder as quick as possible. Give the receiver a chance to make a move. Nowhere to go on second down for Gage Walker. He's brought down for a loss of a couple. Russ Yeast, among others, in on the stop. As you take another look. Yeah, when you the key to running the ball, it's not by having one great block. You know, in a pass game, you can have a great throw and a great catch. In the run game, it's about all five guys up front. And unfortunately, left tackle, Cole Spencer just getting his head on the wrong side of the defender, gets beat inside, and when you do that in the run game, the play's dead. And brings pressure, the throw for Jernigan. A little bit errant. And the Hilltoppers will have to punt once again. Yeah, and I'm not really, I'm not really mad at the ball placement here. This is Jernigan just not getting out of his break. This ball's got to be complete high and outside. Jernigan just gets stuck in the top of his route. He's a big guy. He's a big body. But still, you've got to be able to get in and out of it. He goes 6'3", 210, and it's hard for those guys to get their shoulders over their toes and then get back out of the break. Duncan's expecting one thing. Jernigan's doing another. And Another punt. Haggerty's last punt went for 20 yards. This one much better as Burns fields it from a 13-yard line, tries to spin out of a tackle, dragging his defender, then gets pulled back. We'll give him forward progress to the 17-yard line. Devin Key down there, the first to hit him. And so Louisville will start first and 10 from its 17-yard line with 1.14 to go in the first quarter. And Scott Satterfield last week, the 42 0 win over Eastern Kentucky. First shutout victory for Louisville in quite a while. And it's the first one for Satterfield at Louisville. And he said, you know, it's nice to have that one win, but it's time to focus on this one. Yeah, and, and you don't win as many games as he did at App State by getting really excited about winning games that you should win. Uh, he, he's built a one, ga uh, one game at a time mentality in his past life, and he's going to carry that same thing over here. And, and they're, re they're ready for today. Jalen George, the leader of this defensive line, 
The only senior makes the stop for no gain. Second down and 10. This is the second time Louisville has started a drive today from inside its 20 yard line. Yeah, and coming off a 10 play drive this last drive, you know, they really wore down this front, uh, this defensive front for Western Kentucky. Looking for them to pound the ball more and start to isolate receivers outside. Cunningham stands tall in the pocket, fires to the outside, and it's hauled in for a first down by Devontae Pete. Just his second catch of the year to the 28 yard line, and a fresh set of downs for the Cardinals. Yeah, very similar throw to the one that Western Kentucky just missed on to a very similar body type. The difference is Devontae Pete, who's 6'6", 215, redshirt senior, does get out of the break, catches the ball away from his body. Fresh set of downs for the Cardinals. First and 10 after the gain of 11 as we wind down here in this first quarter. Barring an incompletion, this is probably the last play. Cunningham started up the middle. Now he bounces it outside. And he ducks out of bounds the 33 yard line. Kyle Bailey, the closest defender, stops the clock with three seconds left. Now they wind it up. And that's the end of the first. And they gave him the that's look the that the they scored quarter. on. The 2 2 Outwell coming across, fake the jet sweep to him and get breaks contained to the left and uh, get into a second and short. After one quarter in Nashville, the Tops trail the Cardinals 7 0. Back with the start of the second after this. Beautiful day in downtown Nashville after one quarter here at Nissan Stadium. It's Louisville 7 and Western Kentucky nothing. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you. And Jordan, with Malik Cunningham starting for the injured Jawan Pass, we were kind of curious to see how Cunningham would respond. We found out just a few hours before kickoff that Cunningham would be the starter. Not really known as a passer, but so far he's three for three, 30 yards and a touchdown. He's done it with his legs as well, picking up 19 yards on the ground. Yeah, he's been really diverse and offensive coordinator's done a great job just keeping the read simple. He's isolated receivers outside and he's thrown screens and, you know, he's replacing a good quarterback today. Jawan Pass really struggled last year. I think it was more indicative of just the culture and the offense and the scheme and just Louisville football more so than Jawan Pass. But new coaching staff, new identity. They came in here and they said, hey, forget about your comparisons to Lamar Jackson. Don't worry about Lamar. Don't worry about last year. They looked at what Jawan's done great. So last week, he's 12 for 19, 196 yards, four touchdowns. He's got two rushing TDs versus Notre Dame. He's got three this year so far. You know what? They've done a great job getting Jawan Pass ready. Bummer that he's not playing today. They go with that same shovel forward to Tutu Atwell, and Atwell is close to a first down and picked it up. Yeah, and with Atwell, <laughs> how do we get him the ball? If we can throw him posts over the top all day, that's fine, and we can try and manufacture completions down the field. But with a backup quarterback in the game, let's get him involved in the run game. Let's get him involved in the play action, jet sweep, shovel pass. He's a joystick, and uh, they're moving him around all over the place. They bring a fullback in on this first and 10 play. The give goes to Hawkins, and Jalen George has him wrapped up. And that's one of the things, too, that Coach Satterfield loves to do is really change the personnel groupings and give this defense different looks. This defense different than Louisville, Western Kentucky, running a four down scheme, got four down defensive linemen, two linebackers in the game. And then they've got four DBs on the back end. They bring in another defensive back to play nickel, familiar with that term. And when you do that, you put a fullback in the game, you make the defense change personnel and you can create advantages in the run game. Hassan Hall, the carry, second straight play, and he tumbles forward to the 46 to set up third down and short Antoine Kincaid from his safety spot with the tackle. Yeah off tackle to the left here and different than Western Kentucky we saw before in this case Louisville's up front getting a hat on the hat. Makai Becton doing a great job widening the defender and creating the hole for the running back and getting to third and short again for this quarterback backup coming in getting to third and short so important. Atwell in motion, they fake the sweep to him, they fake the play action, and they throw on the option. And if that pass was completed, Atwell would still be running, but the pressure from Darden too much for Cunningham to handle. And now decision time for Satterfield. It's fourth down and two from right around midfield. And this is just a run pass option. He's got the opportunity to give it to the running back coming across. He's also got an opportunity to run it. 
made the right read to get it to Tutu Atwa, who came across on the jet sweep, the same look they scored on earlier, and the same third down conversion, but defender in his face and can't put the ball where he wants it. Louisville is two for four on fourth down this season. They keep the offense out on fourth and two at the Cardinals 46. Snap to Cunningham. They run the option. The pitch to Hall trying to get around the corner. He lowers his shoulder. It will depend on the spot. And it looks like he got the first down by just enough. I love the play call. Putting the pressure on the defense. You can do it by having your quarterback drop back if he's a passer. You can also do it by moving the quarterback horizontally, option look. He's got the opportunity to give it to the tailback. If he doesn't, then he can go ahead and pitch it or he can run it himself, putting too much pressure. And again, not looking for a big play, just looking for a first down conversion, and they get it. First and 10 of the 49, Cunningham jumps over a defender and takes it to the 45, make it the 46. And of three or four yards, brings up second down. Getting Malik on the perimeter. It's a play action. He's getting outside the pocket. And you see him just start to pump fake earlier in there. He has a comeback to his right, and he's open, and just a new guy in there, run first type quarterback. Had an opportunity to drive the ball down the field, and but keeps it and gets positive yardage. Second down and six. Cunningham firing deep for Atwell. Atwell's got it! Second touchdown today for Cunningham and Atwell. And the Cardinals have a two-score lead. And this is exactly what running the football on first and second down does. Every defender is in the box except for the guys playing man-to-man -man coverage. 2-2 Two -two Atwell, too much speed from the left, bringing him all the way across the field. And what a confidence builder from Malik Cunningham, the redshirt sophomore, getting the start and dropping an absolute dime. 44 yards from Cunningham to Atwell. And there's no catching Tutu when he's in the open field like that. Creaky knocks through the extra point. 14-0 Louisville on top of Western Kentucky. 12.04 to go in the first half. Tutu Atwell, the playmaker, he does it again. Well, welcome back to Nashville. 12.04 to go in the first half. And for the second time today, Jordan, Malik Cunningham, the man you see on the screen just now, hooking up with Tutu Atwell for the second time. For yeah, a and score. bring your eyes right here. Number 31, Antoine Kincaid. He just settles his feet just enough for Tutu Atwell. At that point right there, if the defender has his shoulders square to the quarterback, I don't care if there's five yards of cushion. You got a receiver running full speed and you got a DB with his feet set. At that point, even if the DB's five yard past him, in this case he was, he's open. He can't go from there to turning and running, especially not with Tutu Atwell. And so from a quarterback's perspective, as soon as you see that, once his feet are set, let that thing go as high and far as you can and let somebody with the speed that Tutu Atwell has at 5'9", 153, again, the T.Y. Hilton comparison, put that thing out there and let him take it to the crib, and that's exactly what they did. LaFrance from the goal line. Just trying to get out past the 20, and he won't be able to. He shoved that of bounds at the 18. That was a 10-play, 83-yard drive that took 4-10 off the clock for Louisville. You know, their first drive went for negative three yards. Since then, two touchdown drives, a 58 and 83 yards. Yeah, and, they, and they're both 10-play drives, too. That's what's so impressive. Again, when you run the ball like this, you put the defense in a lot of pressure and if you also look at this, this Louisville offensive coordinator, Dwayne Ledford, he's been a run game coordinator for eight years, and he also coaches O-line. Where do you think his experience is in? It's in dialing up run plays. It's not in dialing up passes down the field. He's done a great job of pounding the ball and opening up big plays down the field. Similar play to the run, the one that Louisville's run with Tutu Atwell. This time it goes to Sloan. And Sloan takes it for a nice gain on first down to set up second and medium. Yeah, and Jacquez Sloan is Western Kentucky's version of Tutu Atwell. He's 5'9", 165 pounds, speedster, and, and you're right, this is an identical play. It's a jet sweep, it's a wide toss, whatever you want to call it. Counts as a pass play. As a quarterback, you love those ones, right? Just tap it to the guy and get some, some yards after catch. 
Uh, but it just puts pressure on the defense to have contain outside so you can continue to attack between the tackles. Play action. Duncan has a man wide open over the middle. That's the tight end, Joshua Simon. Simon inside the 20, and he's gone. What a response from Western Kentucky. 77 yards for the true freshman tight end. And quick, simple reads get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Linebacker bites, nothing left, and it's just nothing but green grass in front of you. Great job, long strider. And this guy's played wide receiver in the past. Obviously a dynamic athlete. They're looking to get the ball in his hands and a tight end, it's usually out routes, it's usually option routes, it's usually shallow crosses across the field. But when you can have a run pass option and put the defender coming downhill, you get Simon in space and 70 something yards later, you put seven points on the bar board. Huge response for this Western Kentucky offense and boy did they need this. The tops right back in it, down just one score early in the second quarter. Duncan to Simon, 77 yards. The second career touchdown reception for the true freshman tight end, Joshua Simon, a 77-yard hookup from Stephen Duncan. Simon left the game last weekend against FIU after the opening kickoff. He got hurt, didn't play the rest of the game, practiced all this week, and... Simon was one of the guys that Tyson Helton on our phone call was very excited about having in this offense. Yeah, he is. He's, he's a true freshman, but he's a man amongst boys. He's 6'5", 235. And obviously, you get him in space, and, and he's a long strider, great turnover. He was gone right there. And getting young players, when you're turning around a program, getting young players involved. This is, a, this is an older team. There's a lot of juniors and seniors starting across the board, both sides of the ball. So when you do have a true freshman tight end, when you have the left tackle, another freshman, Gunnar Britton, one of the bright spots on this offense, playing. Having those guys getting involved early on in the season is so big because you can put pressure on the defense, but it also helps build the foundation of what this team is going to look like in 2019. Got some pieces there, and Tyson Helton, a great offensive mind. We talked earlier about the quarterbacks. He's helped mentor. We've talked about some of the head coaches he's worked with. His father was a head coach at Houston for a while. In fact, Tyson played for his father at Houston in the 90s. Malik Cunningham, two touchdown passes today, gives on the ground on first down. That's Hawkins pushing the pile past the 30, close to a first down. And Hawkins picks up nine. Correction, he picks up the first down. Yeah, and for Western Kentucky, that was just such an important, it wasn't a drive, right? It was two big right. plays. They had their own 80-yard drive. It just happened in less than a minute in two plays. But such an important response by the offense, equally as important response for this defense to get off the field before the half. Cunningham keeps it on the option, picks up a healthy gain on first down. You know, Cunningham... I'm just trying to figure out ways to put pressure on the defense. When you when you run an option play like this, you're getting a hat on the hat across the board, and then you leave one defender for the quarterback, and it's his job to read him. He's either going to toss it, fake toss it and keep it, or go ahead and keep it himself. Go ahead, nice eight-yard gain right there. And, you know, so far this season, he's he's got almost 100 yards on the ground and a touchdown, and they're trusting him to be able to drop back and make plays. Cunningham on the run, deep downfield, had Dawkins, but it's off his chest. And incomplete. Seth it, Dawkins looking for his first reception on the year. Another big wideout, 6'3", 212. And when you have big wideouts like that, it's only helpful if they catch the ball away from their body or they go up and get it. And when you're, you can be 6'10", 250 pounds at wide receiver, but if you wait to catch the ball in your body on your waist, any DB, I don't care what the discrepancy is in height, is going to get a chance to get a hand in there. Dawkins still without a catch this season. He's going to have to catch the ball away from his body if he's going to get one. Third and two. They dump it out to the right. It's a first down and a whole lot more for Louisville into Western Kentucky territory and down the sideline to the 33-yard line. And this, and this is what Malik Cunningham can do. When he puts pressure on the defense as a runner, he's got a run pass option. He can give it there. He can run it himself. 
But if the defensive end right there in that case is too tight, he can kick it right out to the flat to Marshawn Ford for a big first down. Marshawn Ford, the Louisville native, picks up 23 on third down and two. So it's first down Malik Cunningham and the Cardinals at the Western Kentucky 34. Hawkins around the right side, tripped up inside the 30 at the 29. Now they're running the ball well, and they're getting stops on defense until that last drive, but I'm still, I'm very impressed with Malik Cunningham right now. Not because he's dropping back, not just the touchdown pass over the top, just the way he's ran this offense. They had one pre-snap procedural penalty on the first drive, nothing since. And he's just getting them into the right plays, and he's made really good decisions so far. They go to the ground again. Hawkins keeping those feet moving. He's brought down to the 25. It'll bring up third down and short for Louisville. You know, and they've had success attacking the right side of this Western Kentucky defense. They're just getting a push. The big boys up front, right guard, Robbie Bell, right tackle, Tyler Haycraft. Let's go ahead and say their names, get those guys some love. They're getting a push. These running backs aren't getting touched a lot of times until they're two, three, four yards down the line of scrimmage. And, uh, See if they can do it on third down. Some movement on the defensive front. The signal is offside. Jeremy Darvin, the former state champion wrestler in high school, jumped across the line. Offside. Defense, number 53. Caused the offense to react. A five-yard penalty results in a first down. And that's not a surprise that Louisville's had success running to the football. It's their identity. But at the same time, this is a Western Kentucky defense for the first two games, only allowing a little over 85 yards per game on the ground. Yeah, through two games, which can be a misleading stat, one of the best run defenses in the country in Louisville, finding the holes there. Cunningham off play action behind his man. He was looking for Devontae Pete. And second down. Yeah, and they are putting pressure on this Western Kentucky defense. But when you start to play action, you start to throw the ball over the middle of the field. This is when accuracy is at a premium. He's got a clean pocket, a bad miss there by Malik Cunningham. And that's why continuing to allow him to do the things that he does well, stretching the perimeter, throwing the ball down the field, trying to throw guys open, and then driving the ball to the perimeter. But it's over the middle is where accuracy gets difficult because it's so much about timing. The handoff to Hawkins. Hawkins can stroll in for a Cardinal touchdown. 20 yards on the run for Hawkins. It's his first rushing them, touchdown of the year. Yeah, it is, and it's just giving them, you got three guys in the backfield that can run, and I'm counting Malik Cunningham in that mix. Really four guys. And a simple off tackle, and all he needs is a little bit of space. Outflakes the defense. Devin Key just out of position. Devin Key's got to stay outside, force him back inside. He gets out of position and walk in touchdown. Creaky's good on his extra point. Eight plays, 75 yards, a little over three minutes. And Louisville with a punch right back after Western Kentucky's long touchdown. Stadium is your new way to watch national sports. The only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Live and classic games, daily live studio programming, and original programming. Check your local television listings or go to watchstadium.com. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. A Javian Hawkins 20-yard rushing touchdown caps off an eight-play, 75-yard drive that took 3.04 off the clock. And after Western Kentucky answered with a 77-yard pitch and catch to their freshman, it's Hawkins and Cunningham who march right down the field and give Louisville another two-score advantage. Louisville offense just wearing out this Western Kentucky defense. And, and we were down on the field before the game. It, I mean, it's hot. Yeah. It's hot and it's humid and so important for this defensive front for Western Kentucky to be able to hold their ground, lean on these offensive linemen, but it's the misdirections that we've seen Louisville be able to create space between the tackles. 91 degrees today in Nashville as the France takes it up to the 19 yard line. You know, Jordan, the Cardinals, after going three and out on their first possession, they've scored a touchdown on each of their last three drives. Malik Cunningham, whatever adjustments Scott Satterfield has made since then, it's worked dividends for him. Yeah, it has. He just looks comfortable. I haven't seen him. I don't know the playbook and I don't have a coach's headset on, but. I haven't seen him force anything. I haven't seen any poor decisions. 
the last series you know he missed a, a, a post for a touchdown. Ah, that's that's kind of a tough throw especially when you're not taking starter reps. I, I'm just I'm impressed with how poised and comfortable he is. Let's see if Stephen Duncan can engineer another scoring drive for the tops. He fires a lofty one down the right side. No chance for Lucky Jackson. Yeah, and this Western Kentucky offense, they want to be able to make their hay by running the ball. But when you've got a 21-7 deficit, you got to put the ball in the hands of your quarterback. And here they are taking a shot on first and 10. He doesn't really get a clean pocket. He's got a guy in his face. He can't get all the way through it. Receiver did have a step on the DB. And, and we know that Duncan, he can get the ball down the field, but you can if you can't follow through. And, and that one he wasn't able to. Quick completion to Pearson. And Jacor Pearson picks up a nice block from Sloan and takes it to the 26 to make it a third down and three. And the Hilltoppers only two yards on the ground today. We've talked about Gage Walker and the great start to his season, but just the ground game has not been able to get going yet. And part of that is because the scoring drive for Western Kentucky was only two plays, but other than that, Gage Walker just hasn't been able to get his feet under him yet. Yeah, and it's 21 7 in the first half, but you still have to be able to run the ball and third and medium here. They go to Walker and he is hit behind the line. In fact, I think he ran into his own man and it was cleaned up by Malik Clark, the red shirt sophomore. And so Western Kentucky has to punt. And this wasn't just a tackle made in the backfield. There was nowhere to go. Off tackle here, inside zone run play. And look at the push by this Louisville defense. We talked about on third and down, moving around, winning with confusion. That time they didn't. They lined up, they put four dudes with their hand on the ground, and they pushed that offensive line backward. Nowhere for the running back to go. Another punt for Haggerty. And it's a boomer. Inside the 15, it's fielded. And tripped up at the 25 yard line. The return man, Javian Hawkins. Make that Burns. Yeah, and one of the one of the spots that we've seen here that's been a bright spot is has been the kicking game for for Western Kentucky. A booming punt right there, as you said. They've already down one inside the 20, kicking it out of bounds. They've the, from a special teams perspective, that's the, the special teams coordinator is going to be talking to his guys saying, hey, keep it up, because what they've done is they've made Louisville drive the length of the field. They've really won the field position game. It's just been the Western Kentucky's defense inability to stop the run and Western Kentucky's offense and ability to drive the ball down the field and get any sort of run game going. But there's a lot of football left to be played. A 63 yard punt. They go to a quick hitter to Dawkins, his second grab of the day. Join us tonight for our next game on Facebook. Ohio visits the Hundering Herd of Marshall. You can catch the game at 6.30. Stadium, welcome to the game. Doc Holliday and the Marshall Thundering Herd. It's Marshall, it's Louisiana Tech, and it's Western Kentucky, the top three teams as far as wins go in Conference USA since 2011. And Western Kentucky, even though they've only won three games last year, five, uh, six the year before, and they're still right up there with those two programs as the top of the class in Conference USA. And Tyson Helton's trying to get back to that success that Willie Taggart and Bobby Petrino and Jeff Brom had built up. Yeah, and, what, and Conference USA, I, I used to play in Conference USA. It's one of those conferences where it is up for grabs every single year. If you can run the ball and complete downfield passes and play decent defense, it, it really is anybody's game. It's not a top-heavy conference like the SEC and Pac-12 and Big Ten are. It's, it's really up for grabs every single year. And so Tyson Helton's coming into this situation confident that if he can get that culture right, if he can get the discipline right, and they can find their playmakers, Offside. and they're starting to find Defense. them. But Number once 99. Conference USA With play contact. starts. Five yard penalty results in a first down. They're going to be in a position to have some success and more pre snap penalties. The second time in two drives, a defensive tackle for Western Kentucky has moved early. Hassan Hall is the tailback on first and 10 at the 37 for Louisville. Cunningham quickly over the middle. It's hauled in to the 45-yard line. That's Thomas Jackson, the transfer from UNC. Jackson's second catch of the season. 29 games for the Tar Heel. Had 16 catches, two of them for touchdowns in 11 games a season ago. More quick reads. 
more easy quick decisions by the quarterback and and again more personnel changes here as they only have two receivers in the game at well in motion they hand off left side a lot of space for Hassan Hall he tries to hurt a defender he gets flipped over along the sideline and now some drawing back and forth between the two sides Hassan Hall that was an impressive run trying to jump over Deontay Ruffin yeah and they just break contain all Louisville linemen on the outside of the defender getting Hassan Hall in space and allowing him to find another area of space and making a highlight gain of 17 yards and a first down of the WKU 37 Cunningham keeps it weaves back towards the middle and just got tripped up at the 30 yard line he might have had a chance to score there. there was a lot of green space on the opposite side of the field where he was heading but he gets tripped up at the 28 and it's second okay. down with four minutes to go in the second quarter and to the naked eye here you're just looking at this Louisville offense and every single snap you know the term is misdirection but there's somebody going left there's somebody going right and after that happens Malik Cunningham still sitting there with the ball and has the ability to hand it to another running back so difficult for this defense to just follow the ball second down and one at the 28 they go right up the middle and it's a first down for Louisville for the 22. That's when you win with Mr. Re when you win with this direction the way that they've been doing this and then this last play you just line up you give it to the running back not so much misdirection got a tight end coming across to lead isolation block they call that an iso on the linebacker not necessarily going to hit a home run on these plays but you're getting a hat on a hat and you're allowing the running back to run on a safety and uh, and these running backs for Louisville have been running on safeties they've been putting their foot in the ground and looking for contact so first down and 10 at the 22 of Western Kentucky from Malik Cunningham and Louisville play action Cunningham pressured hit from behind and he goes down to 31 that's a huge sack for this Western Kentucky defense to set up second down and long D'Angelo Malone with the sack this play long developing play play action rolling right what they're trying to do is they're trying to throw a throwback to the tailback and the defense doesn't bite on it we have two defenders running downfield to take that wheel route away and when you do that you're asking these linemen to block for a long time defense gets to him forces a second and very long loss of seven under two and a half to play Hawkins the handoff and Hawkins tumbles down at the 25 gain of four sets up third down and 13 you almost feel like for this Western Kentucky defense it has to be a stop here to force a field goal try again more off tackle to the right they're getting a push I mean when they're running the ball simple outside zones but whether it's right or left there is running backs aren't getting touched until a few yards past the line of scrimmage third down and 13 at the 25 21 7 Louisville on top of Western Kentucky as we wind down here in this first half 145 and counting and if you're Malik Cunningham so important to make a great decision right here you're right on the cusp of having points in your back pocket can't force it quarterback draw Cunningham stumbled bounces it left and he is spun down behind the line a flag flies in from the backside Jawan Jones with the tackle the initial signal is that it's going to go against Louisville now decision time for Tyson Helton do you take the 10 yard penalty or do you take the fourth down holding offense number 66 penalties decline result of play brings up fourth down the only reason that's a decision Jordan for Tyson Helton is he push him back 10 yards yeah they get another shot on third and long but get another sack or no gain it's a much more difficult field goal try yeah or you knock him out of field goal range and in this case Tyson Hilton choosing to make the kicker make a kick it's just for far enough out where it is a challenging kick and, and Tyson Hilton just betting against the kicker as opposed to betting against the Louisville offense went creaky one for two this season with a long of 42 this will be a 43 yard try and if he makes it it'll be his longest of the year for the red shirt senior and now a discussion between the officials Justin Elliott coming over to speak with Tyson Helton 121 to go in the fourth or rather the first half 21 7 Louisville leads game clock operator 
Please reset the clock to 126. Western Kentucky has elected to take the clock on the snap. 126, please. The clock will start on the snap. So as you heard from Justin Elliott. Correction, 130. 130. It's a big difference. You go from 126 to 130. Those four seconds are huge. Thank you. So Creaky from 43. Let's make this a three-score game. And Louisville with three timeouts. That's a difference of almost potentially two extra plays on this upcoming drive. Creaky just snuck it in. Side that upright to make it 24-7. Cardinals over the Hilltoppers with 1.23 to go in the first half. Stadium's coverage of high school football continues Friday from South Carolina when Myrtle Beach High School takes on Carolina Forest in a Friday night rivals matchup. Catch all the plays, hard hits, and pageantry that make high school football great. That's Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Stadium and WatchStadium.com. Ten plays, 49 yards, 5-10 off the clock. And Western Kentucky will have 123 and three timeouts to try and get something on the scoreboard heading into halftime. Yeah, and Josh, speaking of high school football, we got a chance to go watch a high school football game last night. Trent Dilfer taking over Lipscomb Academy as the head coach here in Nashville. They beat Page High School last night. Got to stand on the sidelines and watch them get a big win and see Trent Dilfer for my first time seeing him on the sideline with a headset on, it was pretty fun. What'd you think? Well, he got the win, and he's a, if anybody knows Trent Dilfer, whether they watched him play or played with him, they know he's an intense guy, Louisville, and he's also an absolute brilliant four. football mind, and he really Louisville, cares about the kids. And I've worked four. with him for 10 plus years on the Elite 11, and so it's fun watching him take a break from TV and all that and dive into high school football. And my takeaway from watching last night is just a reminder how pure and awesome high school football is. The whole, the little kids playing around, watching the older kids play, and the parents going nuts, and the, you know, the moms dressed up in their kids' dresses is super fun. La France from a yard deep. Across the 15, shuffles past the 20, and he's down at the 22. And so Stephen Duncan in this Hilltopper offense, 116, three timeouts. It'll be first and 10 from the 23. Yeah, and when you're in this situation, Western Kentucky, it's important to get positive play on this return. You don't want to dance around and waste time. And you want every yard matters here as you're looking to get chunk yardage and get either into field goal range or position to score. So step one, good return. They got 70 plus yards to go, but they got three timeouts. They've got a quarterback who has the arm talent to push the ball to perimeter, be able to stop the clock. Tyson Helton, an offensive mind. He's been in this situation before, and he's really good end of half, end of game. So first and 10 of the 22, Duncan. They start on the ground for Walker. Walker with a nice chunk gain on first down. About six, seven yards. And these timeouts are so precious. You look at a run play on first down, but it's a positive play, getting up the line of scrimmage and getting the next play called. That throw behind Sloan over the middle. And that brings up third down and four at the 28. Louisville defense trying to take away the boundary. Left hash here, you're going to want to throw the ball. Out breaking route to your left. Everybody on the left side of the defense, outside leverage. Third down and four, Duncan pumped. Now he lost the football and it's picked up by Louisville. It's Rajay Burns shutting off a tackle and taking it all the way back for a Louisville touchdown. Disaster for Western Kentucky and it's 30 to seven. And Stephen Duncan trying to make a play, trying to make a positive play on third and medium, but unfortunately ball security and turnovers has been the problem for this Western Kentucky offense. They've been on interceptions, not fumbles. But Stephen Duncan, this is a backbreaker. Trying to get in field goal range, but worst case scenario, you want to be able to punt, get yourself Louisville too much field to go with with uh, under a minute to go. And this is an absolute backbreaker for this Western Kentucky offense. 
and all the momentum at the end of the half is on the Louisville sideline. Remember Western Kentucky responded after falling down 14 nothing to make it 14 7. And since then 17 unanswered points for the Louisville Cardinals and they take a 31 to 7 lead with 47 seconds left in the half. Yeah I feel like we blinked and all of a sudden Louisville has just flipped this game making plays on defense. Great job being able to stop the run by Louisville's defense. They haven't given up any big plays downfield and now they've created their first turnover of the day and not just a turnover but a scoop and score as we see the Louisville defense celebrating in the end zone. A 30 yard return on the fumble for Rajay Burns. And this one has gotten out of hand as you said what feels like the blink of an eye. Yeah Western Kentucky they've responded they have a long touchdown. They've made some big plays in the passing game but just overwhelmed by this Louisville defense. Tonight we have another game on Facebook as Duke visits Middle Tennessee. You can catch the game exclusively on Facebook at 7 p.m. Stadium. Welcome to the game. A couple of ACC Conference USA matchups today on Stadium. This one right here in Nashville. And then of course Duke and Middle Tennessee later on tonight. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you. Still 47 seconds left. Three yep. timeouts, still a chance. And how can Western, I mean, you feel like just some sort of momentum they have to get here on this drive before the half ends? Well, they got to get off the field. This game, this, this half has to end 31 7. They can't allow them to get in field goal range. That's Fortenberry, a tight end. Make that Wachowski a tight end. And he takes it out for the 28. Yeah, Western Kentucky. Got to have an effort. They still have three timeouts left. Can they get a couple of chunk yards? Obviously can't turn the ball over. But as they come out of this second half, the defense for Western Kentucky, they've got to find a way to create a turnover. They can't just have three and outs. Uh, they've got to be able to create a turnover. And then offensively, they've got to be able to push the ball down the field. We haven't seen them get any of these wideouts loose downfield. And, and, uh, and defensively for Western Kentucky, they're just getting pushed around a lot up front. And I know there's a discrepancy in these two schools from size and speed standpoint up front, but they've got to find a way to do that. Western decides to just take a knee and head into the locker room. Louisville, an incredible second quarter, 24 points, including 17 unanswered. Scott Satterfield has got to love what he saw from his team in this first half. Yeah, that was just a complete first half. They ran the ball well. Malik Cunningham driving the ball to the sideline. He made the big play over the top to 2 2 at well. And then they get a scoop and score on defense. I think that's everything you ask, uh, ask from your team in this first half. Louisville scored on four straight possessions after that three and out and added that scoop and score. 31 7. Louisville all over Western Kentucky at halftime here from Nashville. All right, we're going to play a little Would You Rather. Nick Saban and Alabama complaining about the early start oh, yeah. time of their game against Southern Miss. Kickoff is slated for 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern. So would you rather play at 11 a.m. Eastern or 11 p.m. Eastern. Amina. Now, you guys know that I'm in bed early. 11 a.m. <laughs> Anything mm -hmm. past 8, 9 p.m. is past my bedtime, mm -hmm. and I don't want to play. I don't want to watch TV. <laughs> I don't want to do anything past 8 p.m. I'm I taking 11 a.m. I want you. You. You next. <laughs> um, I would take 11 a.m. Eastern. Wow. I certainly have not, you know, I can't, like, relate to, to getting up and getting ready to mm -hmm. play for the game, but last week at UNLV, our yeah. game started at 10 o'clock Eastern. Yes. So then you're just waiting around all day. Yeah. Then you get done at night, you can't go. So I got one hour of sleep before my flight. Oh, I was up watching Pac-12 After Dark Kyle with Washington, you. Yeah. Yeah. Pac-12 After Dark. Um, with Amina, I like to go to bed early. Thank you. Give me 11 p.m. No. Oh, for sure. No. What? First off, you get two movies. <laughs> so that's fantastic because they're going to give they're going to give you a movie in room mm -hmm. the night before then they're going to take you to the movies the day of the game. Wow. So I'm giving two movies all day. Well, then I'm just ready for the game. I'm going to be sitting like in a movies. theater while oh, the I want to be sitting in a theater no. all the time. Nope. <laughs> I never want to be two movies. In a theater. You're going to see two movies. I remember we played Miami. We played Miami at eight o'clock in yeah. 2004. We got movie in room. So uh -huh. we got a free pay-per-view movie. Fantastic. Then we got to go to the movies in the morning 
Only you. Only That's like your thing, team. though. He loves movies. That you still remember. 2004. It was the greatest 15 thing. 15 years ago, you Especially still remember that you got a pay per view later. Right. Here's, the, thing. here's movie. the best part. Do you remember the movie? Yeah, Saw. Here's the best part. <laughs> the original. Here's the best part. Because it's the day of the game, guys don't want to eat their popcorn. So what am I getting? I'm snatching up all the popcorn no, tickets. The popcorn. Give me the popcorn vouchers, baby. I'm not going to get in the game. Give me the popcorn oh, vouchers. I went from everybody on the team gets a, gets a small popcorn. Yeah. Give me those vouchers. I got the large big wow. boy. Get the refill. We're golden. Not the I'm large not getting, what am I going to do? Boy. Cramp up? No, absolutely not, because I'm not going to play. This is fantastic. Like, Two give, movies. Give me, give me that popcorn yeah. voucher. Give me that popcorn You're not going to use it. You're not going to use it. Get the popcorn wow. voucher. Get a popcorn voucher. All right. I have a plan coming into this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Make it, you make a compelling point. I see what you're saying. That's amazing. The fact that you remember that it was soft. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. Uh, we got uh, Florida and Kentucky facing off. We know that there's always anticipation yes. when it comes to oh, yeah. that Ooh. matchup, whether it's in football or basketball. Oh, oh. Oh, sorry, are you looking at the questions I on the screen? I didn't even look. See, I didn't even look. I He's just, reading the one, questions I, off of our monitor. This one, this one I looked at. All right. <laughs> Would you rather, since you already know it, yes. play football at a basketball school or play basketball at a football school? I would rather play basketball at a football school. School. Yeah, I agree. Without a doubt. Yeah, I, I mean, feel like I feel like if you play if you play football, I guess if you play basketball at a football school, I don't know. It's always no, really weird. Bas I'm gonna tell you, this is the answer. This is the definitive answer. Definitive answer. This is the definitive answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Basketball at a football school, uh -huh. because if you're really really good, they love you. Yeah. All good. We right. just saw what is it, Buddy Hill, Held, Hyde, Held. Buddy Hill. Buddy yeah. Hill. <laughs> yep. Just saw him. He was at the Oklahoma game this mm -hmm. weekend. Yep. They gave him a little standing O. No big deal. But everybody's focused on the football. If you're bad, guess what? They still don't care. So we're good to go. Right. I'm going with that versus being at a football, being being a football player at a basketball school, basketball you did team. That. We, yeah, that's UNT. Not, yeah, tell you, it's not great. Would you rather dance like Mac Brown? Remember mm -hmm. this? Oh, oh boy. Yep. Oh boy. He kept it real simple. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> First of all. I said this on Twitter, and I stand by it. That's me after two and a half glasses of wine. <laughs> no doubt about it. Or would you rather dance like me? Ooh. Keeping in mind, I did not put this question together. Oh boy. Guys, it doesn't look that much different if I'm being honest. Honestly, spike the ball. Honestly, spike the ball. <laughs> this was me doing the icky shuffle at UNLV. The woo-woo really I'm going, with the, I'm going with dance that, like KB. Yeah, KB, you KB, KB said no, just being woo. nice to me. We got to stick together. I have good friends up here. They're being nice to me. got to stick together. We got to, listen, can't forget the woo-woo. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really what set it off for me. I think when I saw the video and I saw the woo-woo, I was yeah. like, okay. I showed you my I'm notes in. from Saturday. I'm yeah. totally in. I'm in on it. can't forget the woo-woo. I literally wrote, got to get the woo-woo. Yeah. I love it. I just want to say, seeing those two together, there really is not much of a difference <laughs> you gotta keep that for the I archive. said that. I said that after a couple glasses of wine, but actually, that's, that's probably just me all the time. Like, you know, I'm still a little bit of this. He did I'm like, like a, he did like an up and a down. Um, yeah. He's trying. He's, He's trying. simple. He's, He's staying in his lane when it comes to the exactly. music, right? Yeah, exactly. to Nashville. We've reached halftime between Louisville and Western Kentucky. We hope you've enjoyed today's game so far. Go deeper into the biggest college football games each week on Tape Don't Lie. Stadium college football analyst Michael Felder goes into the film room with a rotating cast of football experts to take a deep dive on college football's most important players and teams. New episodes drop each week on Stadium's Facebook page. Stadium, welcome to the game. Jordan and I will be back in just a moment to Recap the first half and go through some stats and highlights. That's next. Welcome back to Nissan Stadium in Nashville. 31 to 7 Louisville over Western Kentucky at the break. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you. And Jordan, this first half, all Louisville with this 24-point advantage. It was 14-7 at one point. Western Kentucky connected on a big play that we'll see in just a moment. But since then, the Cardinals just exploded for 17 unanswered. Yeah, they've been overwhelming them on offense. And unfortunately for the Western Kentucky offense, they just haven't been able to get any chunk yardage. They haven't been able to run the ball at all, and it's just been real lopsided, especially the way that they've created that turnover and just really opened up this half. Well, let's take a look at how things unfolded in that first half. We'll go right to that 77-yard completion from Duncan to Joshua Simon, the true freshman. 77 yards there, and it was 14-7. It was, but besides this play, the Western Kentucky offense just averaging two yards per play, and on the Louisville offensive side of the ball, they, it's really all work. They've been able to run the ball on first down. They've created some seams here in the running game, and that's opened up the play action. And so important in any of these games to win the turnover margin, 
and Western Kentucky not just turning the ball over at the end of the half, but a scoop and score. Louisville plus one on the turnover margin. They're running the ball well, opening up the play action, making plays, and a 14-7 game really blows the doors open here at the end of the first half. You see 77 of the 125 yards that Western Kentucky picked up in that first half came on the Simon touchdown. The six rushing yards, uh, Gage Walker has been so good in the first two games. No holes for him today, but Malik Cunningham, the big story for Louisville, he's been fantastic in relief of Juwan Pass, who is out today. Yeah, he's a dynamic runner. We knew that coming into the game, but I've just been so impressed with the poise that he's had stepping in for Jawan Pass, getting announced the starter right before the game. And he's ran it well, he's thrown it well. When he's had an opportunity for a big play, he's hit 2-2 out well, and he's been impressive. 31-7 at the break. Second half is coming up next from Nashville. Start of the third quarter at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. 31-7 Louisville all over Western Kentucky. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you, and also with us, our fan of the game this afternoon at Nissan Stadium. Now look at her. Cardinals fan braving out the heat in the first row. She's got to love what she's seen today from her Cardinals. Yeah, there's a lot to be excited about for this Louisville fan base. And, you know, it's a, call it a neutral site. Hour, hour and change for both of these schools and the fans making the trek. And we've seen a lot of a lot of excitement out of this. They're sitting right in front of us. They're going nuts. And when you have a new coaching staff as a fan base, you know, you don't know what to expect. It, ex, you know, the excitement level can be high and optimism can be there. But to come into a game like this, to find out, you know, an hour before the game that your starting quarterback that you're so excited about is not playing, that optimism can get uh, can get subdued a little bit. And, and uh, Louisville, just offensively, defensively, special teams. Uh, showing signs of life and and we've they probably heard a lot about the culture that coach Satterfield's brought here But now is when you've been able to see it actually play out Pretty good first week versus Notre Dame I think better than most people thought blowout win last week and then After that first half of play There's a lot to be excited about if you're a Louisville Cardinals fan now, This is a Louisville team that was picked to finish last in the ACC in the preseason, but again Notre Dame Eastern Kentucky and now Western Kentucky Obviously not murderer's row there, but at the same time, you can definitely see the difference. You can feel the difference in this Louisville program. It doesn't feel like a team that's going to finish in last place in, in the ACC. No, it doesn't, particularly the way that not just their backup plays playing, but, but Jawan Pass, the starting quarterback. Um, and you know they got Florida State next week, and then they go, they go to Florida State, then they're on a bye, and so this is the momentum at the right time of the year. Next Saturday, UTSA visits North Texas. You can catch that game exclusively on Facebook at 7.30 p.m. Stadium, welcome to the game. So Malik Cunningham after that stellar first half, 7 of 10 through the air, 114 yards, two touchdowns of 2 to Atwell. He also had 33 yards on the ground. This little offense really caught fire in that second quarter. 17 offensive points. They've scored on four straight possessions since the opening drive, three and out. Let's see what they start with here in this third quarter. Well, the key difference for me has been on first down. And they've been, in the second quarter, they averaged over, over six yards a play. And when you do that, you open up the whole playbook. The give on first down goes to Hawkins, and he's across the 30. And he's down right there. And if I'm Louisville, I'm going to keep running behind that left side. If you look at this offensive line for Louisville, all four of the five guys are under 300 pounds, which is pretty small for an ACC offense. But then the average gets a little offset. Makai Becton, this left tackle, the junior, 6'7", 370. So he's going to adjust the, uh, the average weight there by the line pretty good. And he started 15 consecutive games. That's a team high. This pitch is on the turf. It's loose. And Western Kentucky says they have it. And they do. And if the Hilltoppers are going to come back in this second half, they're going to need plays like that. And a great start for the tops here in this third quarter. D'Angelo Malone falls on the pitch. And we said it at the end of the half. They're going to have to create turnovers. Now, this is a little bit more of an unforced error than anything. The ruling on the field is doesn't matter. Pass Jumping on it. And recovered by the defense. Recovering First it. down, Western Kentucky. And creating the turnover, and not just creating a turnover, creating a turnover on the right side of the field. Great job by this Western Kentucky defense. Even if they didn't turn that over, that was well defended. That option play, again, they're trying to isolate it, put one of the defenders on the quarterback and allow the quarterback to make a decision. And 
Unforced air. Louisville offense. Opportunity for Western Kentucky to capitalize. D'Angelo Malone kept it from going out of bounds, and then Devin Key fell on it. I think Scott Satterfield wants this officiating crew to check on that. Louisville is challenging. They're really on the field with a fumble recovered by the defense inbounds. So we'll take a look as well and see what happened here along the sideline. You can see the linesman over there explaining to Satterfield what the ruling on the field was. Let's get a look. This is a great angle. Goes through the hands of Atwell. Let's see if Malone steps out when he makes contact. That, to me, that looks like Western Kentucky football. Yeah, I don't see anything going out of bounds. And, you know, it's so funny. You grow up playing this game and you hear from a young age, it's a game of inches. <laughs> In certain circumstances, it literally is a game of inches as we get a closer look from the other angle. And remember, it has to be clear and conclusive evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was a fumble recovered by Western Kentucky. And I don't see anything there that is clear and cut and conclusive that would change this call. Not from that angle. And if you're Coach Satterfield, why not challenge this, right? Timeouts, when you got a lead like this, burning a timeout, if it's not overruled, is irrelevant. I hope you shouldn't need timeouts in this game. And uh, but we talked about the key to the second half for Western Kentucky creating a turnover and doing it in the, their side of the field. And so if you're Coach Satterfield, why not allow these guys to take another look at it? And he's still smiling. Well, he's got to be happy with the way his team and his backup quarterback have played. Again, this is a 20 to 17 final last year when these two teams played. A missed field goal at the end was the difference between the win for Louisville and the going to overtime. And they have been in control early in the second quarter on. Yeah, it really has all worked in that first half. 2-2 Atwell was a guy, you know, we were wondering. Here's the call from Here's Justin call. Elliott. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Louisville has charged their first time out and has no challenges remaining in the game. First down, Western Kentucky. Yeah. And we we're talking for a sec about Tutu Atwell. We were wondering with a backup quarterback, how are they going to get him involved if you're not going to drop back and throw it every play? And you don't have necessarily the same plays available to you as you would with Juwan Pass playing. And they figured out ways in the first half to get him the ball. He's been the difference maker. Let's see if Western Kentucky's offense can really get going. That fumble return for a touchdown before the half was a backbreaker. Trying to get Gage Walker going. Walker lowers his shoulder pads and gets inside the 35 to the 33. And just because there's the deficit that there is for this offense, it does not mean that you would abandon the run. And Tyson Helton, Brian Ellis, these guys have been around the block as coaches calling plays. You can't just abandon the run. You got to still try and knock on the door between the tackles. But at the same time, they got to be able to make some plays down the field. Play action. Duncan has it batted down at the line of scrimmage. Dorian Etheridge, the leader of the defense over the last three seasons, the junior from Charleston, Virginia, bats it down at the line, and just like that, it's third down and seven for Western Kentucky. I think this is four down territory for Tyson Helton. Yeah, I think with the score the way that it is, you know, if they have a negative play here, no, or an incompletion, maybe not, but if they can get to fourth and four or five, you have the threat of the ability to run the ball and play action and drop back. We'll see what they do on third down. The handoff up the middle, Walker, and Walker plunges his way about a half yard shy of that first down. Yasir Abdullah, the sophomore out of Miami, Florida, with the stop. And it's fourth and short. And so Western Kentucky, at least now it's a no-brainer for them to go for it. Yeah, it is. And, and from a fan's perspective, it's less about going forward on fourth down. It's more about can you get to one of the fourth down plays that you like and when you're in this position sometimes it's just a QB sneak like this and it's enough as Duncan pushes his way to the 25 26 yard line. He only needed about a half a yard. Yeah it's 6 4 2 30 quarterback Stephen Duncan and he got There's it. not too many other plays I'd call there besides that one. Let him just lean forward and Believe it or not, you can be good at running QB sneaks or bad, and, and uh, good job by Stephen Duncan really finding the hole as opposed to just closing his eyes and leaning. 
Now, Tom Brady famously has a high percentage of success on quarterback sneaks. Duncan dumps it out. This is Walker around the edge, still in bounds, picks up the first down. And a smart play by Duncan there to go to his check down. Picks up a nice gain in a first and goal situation upcoming from the nine. Yeah, it's a good play by Walker, but it's also just a good progression by Duncan. You know, he's looking down the field. He doesn't see anything that he likes. And to have the composure, he's been hit a lot, but to have the composure to get it out of his hands and make a positive play. Gain of 17. Scoring position. Hand off Walker. And he has stood up after a gain of maybe a yard, yard and a half. I was going to ask you, Tom Brady kind of wasn't standalone. When you were playing, did you have a, a high success rate in your quarterback sneaks? Well, it's one of those things where, you know, you really have to pay attention to what's in front of you from a defensive front standpoint. They don't just always put a hat on a hat and line up the cover up the center, cover up both guards. Sometimes there is a gap there. And if it is even, then you get behind the guy that has the best opportunity to, to push that pile forward. And so Tom Brady, so much of it about is the timing of the snap count and also where to run. Second and goal from the eight. Duncan to throw over the middle. Has his man. It's Pearson. Pearson dies for the goal line. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky turns the fumble into six. And it's 31-13. Signs of life here for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Another great progression. Eyes are to the right. We call this a jerk route. He can stop, start, and when he starts again, he creates just enough separation. Ball accuracy and ball placement, so important right there. Gives him an opportunity to dive in, and whatever Tyson Helton told them at halftime, they listened, and it's working, and this is exactly, really the only way to climb back into a first half deficit that they had. So here's the freshman kicker, Corey Munson, the reigning Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Week. It's the first Hilltopper since Mike White in 2017 to win a Player of the Week award in Conference USA, whether it's offensive, defensive, or special teams. The freshman knocks through the extra point, and Western Kentucky with some life. Down 17, 11.37 to go in the third quarter. Seven plays, 36 yards, set up by the fumble, the Pearson touchdown. Don't forget that Stadium is your home for Ring of Honor Wrestling. Check out the latest from the ROH superstars on all stadium platforms on Wednesday and Sunday nights at 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern. Stadium, welcome to the game. Yeah, and as we look at this play again, this is just a jerk route by Jacor Pearson. And what it is is as he gets five yards over the ball and he stops, look at the defender. Duncan's eyes right here are to the right. Jacor Pearson stops and settles the feet of the defender. Jacor Pearson running then across, and all he needs is a yard or two of separation. This isn't something where it's a huge gash play. You just need to get a yard or two of separation. And as I mentioned before, ball placement so important. You can't put it behind him and slow him down. You got to hit him in stride and allow Pearson to dive through for a touchdown that really shifts the momentum here of the second half. Now let's see if the Western Kentucky defense can get a stop as Malik Cunningham and the Cardinal offense will start first and 10 from the 25. That's exactly what Western Kentucky needed. If you ask Tyson Helton, what do you guys have to do to get back in this game? Quick turnover, quick score, repeat. And I'll bet it was something like that, <laughs> literally. We either got to get a stop, defense, we got to create a turnover. We talked to him yesterday about the keys to the game and turnovers was one of the first things he said, partly because they have turned it over and partly because they have not taken it away. And so, you know, having the, the fumble scoop and score for a touchdown in the first half, you get, now they're back to even on the on the uh, turnover margin and then a great job by the offense capitalizing on it. Louisville late getting a substitution on. That was Thomas Jackson sprinting into the slot. Scott Satterfield not happy. Time out. Time out. Louisville, their second. Well, that's already Louisville's second time out of this half, and we're not even four minutes in. Now, will they take a time out of the field? We'll step aside with them. Stadium is your new way to watch national sports, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Live and classic games, daily live studio shows, and original programming. Check your local television listings or go to watchstadium.com.
Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. Yeah, and as we look at uh, the big boy, Makai Becton, 6'7, 370. He's a good player, too. He's a preseason All American, 24 total starts, 15 consecutive. He's uh, anchoring that left side of that line, and why not? Let's see how the Cardinals respond after the turnover. They go to Hawkins on first down, and he's ripped down behind the line. Jalen George rips him down. You know, we've been waiting to say Jalen's name. This guy has been active the first two weeks, and more of the same for Louisville, and Western Kentucky defense having an answer. If they can keep contained for this Louisville run, rushing attack, and every now and then make some plays in the backfield and force second and third and longs, that's playing against Louisville's strong suit and more of a recipe to get back in the game. Cunningham keeps it around the edge, and he dives forward past the 30, and down to the 32. It's just like that third down as Kyle Bailey made the stop. And this is what Cunningham can do. He makes a decision to tuck it. We haven't seen him go backwards a whole lot. He's fallen forward consistently, and big third down right here, not just for the Louisville offense. This is a big third down for the Western Kentucky defense. And they're trying to chip away at this 17-point lead. They've already got a touchdown on the board in this third quarter. Cunningham to throw, steps up, trying to pick it up with his legs, and he does just enough. This is what a, ru a running quarterback can do. He puts so much pressure on the defense, because look at the pass rush. They're fighting as much as they can to get there. The secondary has to respect his ability to throw the ball down the field, so they got to cover, and you usually spy one defender, meaning have a defender who's just about five, six yards deep, eyes in the backfield playing the pass, trying to contain the quarterback, but that's still asking him to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle, and he gets just enough for the first. Ball to 36, play action, Cunningham. Man in his face, throws, and it's batted down at the last second. Nicely done by Trey Meadows, intended for Seth Dawkins. And Jordan Dawkins, someone we talked about earlier on the deep ball, let the ball kind of travel all the way into his body, and something similar there. You feel like if maybe he went and tried to reach out and take that one, he might have had a chance at the catch there. Yeah, he does. He's got to keep coming back to the ball. And, uh, you know, like they're trying to manufacture some completions. That's the second time they're sending a big, fast guy down the field, having him putting his foot in the ground and come back. And when you roll to your left as a right-handed quarterback, it's hard to get your shoulders square and throw the ball on time. He's just a second late there. Cardinals go back to the ground. And it's Hawkins who picks up maybe one or two. And it's third down and long. Antoine Kincaid on the stop. Louisville three of six on third down today. And the recipe here for this Western Kentucky defense is step one, force them into third and longs. Step two, you've got to be able to contain Malik Cunningham. There you go, trips left. Hawkins in the backfield with Cunningham. Cunningham seven of 11 today, a buck 14 and two touchdowns. Playing in place of Jawan, pass out with an injury. Cunningham on third down, hit over the middle. And it flies over the head of Tutu Atwell. Cunningham got knocked down as he threw. And Western Kentucky's defense comes up with another stop. And I love the fight in this defense. Getting after the quarterback, not allowing them to run the ball. And then the pass rush. Running a little simple twist here. And sometimes that's all that takes is just getting somebody in the face of the quarterback. Not allowing him to step into it and complete his throwing motion. That's a great job by this defense right now. The momentum, the turnover before, and then just getting off the field. Well, the way that Louisville's lined up on this punt. Two gunners on the same side. And they almost get to it. Mason King booms it downfield, takes a bounce out of bounds around the 26. Now we will step aside. 8.54 to go in the third quarter. Western Kentucky with the football once again, trailing by 17. Two chances for this Western Kentucky defense in the third quarter to come up with stops, and they have done just that. A fumble recovered by that man right there, Devin Key. They force a punt just now, and now they get the football back, trailing 31-14. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you. Devin Key with that Palomalu light hair over there. He's our moment of the game so far, forcing that turnover 
on the first Louisville, first Louisville drive of the third quarter. Yeah, and we talked about Devin Key just being, no pun intended, a key player for this defense because he's just always around the ball. And when you're always around the ball, as Troy Polamalu was, <laughs> you end up falling on it when it's there. And that turnover leading to a touchdown in Western Kentucky getting back in this game. Well, they need another score on this possession. They do a little pop pass to Sloan, has a blocker, gets around the corner, and he's spun down by the shoulder pads at the 30-yard line, very close to a horse, horse collar. But no call. Second down uh, coming about five yards. Yeah, similar to what we've seen Louisville do with 2-2 two -two Atwell and not a horse collar. Close, violent nonetheless, but uh, doing whatever he can do to get him on the ground. Play action, Duncan for Jackson. He's held up there and two flags fly in. It was Anthony Johnson, the redshirt sophomore, on the coverage of Lucky Jackson, who's been quiet today. Just one catch for no gain. Only the third time he's been targeted. Pass interference. Defense, number 27. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. You know, Josh, we talked about what Western Kentucky has to do to get back in the game. Well, let's flip it. Here's what Louisville can't do to allow Western Kentucky back in the game. The two first things that come to mind is you can't turn it over on offense and you can't have costly penalties. And that's basically what we've seen as the Louisville Cardinals have come out of the second half. Yeah, penalties a big issue last season. Only their second today. Now some more conversation going on with this Conference USA crew led by Justin Elliott, but we're good to go now. Penalty's not a huge issue today, but certainly in the past it has, and that one an ill-timed one. Gives Western Kentucky a first down at the 46. Duncan pumps. Duncan lofting it. And if he was able to complete that to Walker, that would have been six for the tops. Looked like, though, his original read was a screen. It just wasn't there. Yeah, they're trying to fake a jailbreak screen to the receiver and then asking the, the guys who were blocking for him on the left side to then go deep. Louisville stays at home. Duncan getting outside the pocket to his right, trying to make a play. And that's a tough throw. You're rolling to your right, full speed, trying to make something happen and uh, weren't able to connect. Second down and 10. Pitch left, Walker. Unblocked off the edge. That was Chandler Jones. Walker ran right into his teeth. Yeah, more plays being made by this Louisville defense in the background. And this is just a corner fire coming off the edge. He's really unblocked. There's not really much you can ask anybody on the offense to do. That's just a great play call by the defense. And unfortunately, the worst play you can have run is a toss right into it. Third and long, Western Kentucky. Two for eight on third down today. On the season, they've been close to 50%. Louisville showing blitz. They back off the handoff. Goes to Gage Walker, and he picks up a handful of yards, well shy of a first down. And Tyson Helton will send the punt unit out. Yeah, and Louisville showing pressure, like you said. They've got two linebackers lined up between the guards. They can either bring an exotic pressure from that standpoint, or they can get out of there and bail. They choose to bail. And, uh, you know, Western Kentucky has not been aggressive at attacking the middle of the field outside of the long touchdown pass that they had to Joshua Simon. They haven't attacked the middle of the field. And when you bring pressure, that's where the void is, that you can get aggressive and attack the middle of the field. Western Kentucky has really only thrown the ball on the perimeter and choose to run it on third and long in that situation. Haggerty's punt. No fair catch called for. And a nice little return there for Rajay Burns. Next Saturday, we have another game on Facebook as Sacramento State visits Fresno State. Catch the game exclusively on Facebook at 10 p.m. Stadium, welcome to the game. 31-14 here with 6.37 to go in the third quarter. Louisville on top. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer. Feels like somewhat of a missed opportunity for Western Kentucky on that last drive to get some more points and chip into this lead. Yeah, they've capitalized on the momentum, but they're still 
not able to be to run the ball effectively on first and second down and not able to attack the middle of the field. You see Louisville 42 and 3 over the last seven seasons when they score 30 or more. And last year they struggled mightily defensively, especially in the last half of the year. Six of the last seven games, they gave up 50 or more points. And it didn't matter what the offense was able to do, whether they scored 21 or 28. When the defense is giving up 50 a game, it's impossible to win. So right off the bat, a great job by Brian Brown coming over as the defensive coordinator with Scott Satterfield from App State. Led a top 10 defense there multiple years. And they've been stout so far through three games. And you look at that first game of the season against Notre Dame, a lot of people didn't expect that to be close, as close as it was as a 35-17 final. But I think a lot of people thought that that game was going to be reminiscent of the last half of the season that Louisville played. Yeah, they, they started off really fast on defense. They got after the quarterback sacking Ian Book. And, you know, you grow up here in defense wins championships. Satterfield has won championships. He's done it with great defense. And it's typically that's a hard thing to flip really quickly. And they've been able to do that early on in the season. Some space on the run by Hawkins. Make that haul. And Hall is down at the 35. Yeah, and more of the same from Louisville. Getting a hat on a hat and allowing these running backs to run on secondary defenders. You notice these Louisville running backs, they're not breaking tackles from defensive linemen consistent. They're breaking linebackers and safeties tackles. And those who are making the plays, and it's due to the big boys up front. Cunningham rolling out. And he just will keep it. it. Might have been his. Might have been his helmet that he lost. Jeremy Darvin with the stop. It was a gain of about maybe a yard and a half. So Cunningham has to come off. Wonder who they go to for quarterback here. Is they go deeper onto that bench. Remember, Jawan passed the normal starter. Did not start today due to injury. And now Malik Cunningham is down on a knee. Hope he's okay. And he has to set out a play because his helmet came off, unless Louisville elects to burn their last time out. Remember, they only have one left because of the challenge. And if they do have to go to a third quarterback, Evan Conley, the true freshman, you see him right there. 6'2", 207 pounds from Marietta, Georgia. And Conley, regardless, looks like he's going to get his first collegiate snaps. As Cunningham lost his lid on the last play. And as someone, obviously, who at one point made his collegiate debut for the first time, what's going through the mind of Evan Conley right now? Well, you know, I, I train a lot of quarterbacks. High school, college, and NFL I got a chance to work with a lot of quarterbacks heavily in the offseason and one of the things that I always tell these quarterbacks is that you cannot always control when you're going to get your opportunity but you can control how prepared you are for it when it comes and sometimes it comes in a game like this sometimes it comes you know for, for Cunningham it came on a day like today he showed up as the backup and ended up the starter and Conley got a chance so it's Evan Conley we'll see how long he has to play Cunningham slow to get off and not just get a chance to play. How about coming in momentum on Western Kentucky side and third and long? If they go conservative here, they'll let him throw it. Conley's going to throw. Steps up, throws on the run, and it's incomplete. Had a man open. Instead, it falls to the turf. Dawkins, his intended target. Let's take another look. Yeah, and he's going through his progression. His eyes are left. Movement in the pocket and just can't get enough on the ball. So important when your shoulders get square to the line of scrimmage and you're moving towards the defense to be able to stand tall and get all the way through that. He comes off a little sidearm, but this is a guy who has not thrown a football in almost two hours. It's so difficult to come off the bench, and I, I was a backup too. So difficult to come off the bench and throw it the way you want to, particularly when you're talking about third and long, backed up, a pressure situation, and we'll look to see who the quarterback will be for Louisville moving forward. Mason King, his punt lands out of bounds. 
Still 31-14. Western Kentucky's defense has been up to the task in this third quarter. Three Louisville possessions, one turnover, and two punts forced. Tune in next Saturday at noon. Maine visits Colgate. You can watch that game on Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Stadium, welcome to the game. And what I'm looking for from Tyson Hellis, uh, Helton and Brian Ellis from a play calling standpoint, starting the ball off from the 35, can you get aggressive? Can we get a shot down the field? They get it out to Sloan in some space. Sloan stays on his feet past the 40. And he's driven back, but a solid gain on first down for Western Kentucky. Pretty physical run for a guy that stands five foot nine, 165 pounds. Western Kentucky's version of 2 2 out well and, and getting some good blocking in the perimeter by the other receivers. Yeah, Lucky Jackson out there throwing a block, even though he's not got the receptions today. He's still contributing in that sense, although here, Quinn Jernigan couldn't stay on his man. They go the same play just to the opposite side, and it's cleaned up for only a gain of a yard. Yeah, and he's, he's trying to get outside, but sometimes when you get these little guys like Jacquez Sloan, they're always trying to bounce it. And, and that was one of those plays, the defenders on the outside, you really just got to get what you can get and dive forward for a couple of yards because it's the difference between third and four, third and two, which really changes your play call. Third down and four for Western Kentucky. The Louisville fans on their feet at Nissan Stadium. Dunk it. As a man, hauled in Lucky Jackson. A big catch inside Louisville territory and down to the 46. As we watch this replay, they're lined up, they're showing pressure. They bail out again, and they're bailing out into zone coverage, which means the receivers have to do a good job of finding the vacancy in the zone. Really good throw, actually, by Stephen Duncan. Over the underneath defender, and Lucky Jackson getting involved. They needed only four, they picked up 13. First and 10 with 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Ball at the Louisville 46. Duncan for Jernigan in the flat. And that's an ill-advised throw. It goes for a loss. And here was that shot I was talking about a minute ago. When is Brian Ellis and Tyson Helton going to dial one up? And they're looking at Lucky Jackson. He's widening down here on the bottom of your screen. Trying to get a shot. Really good read by Stephen Duncan not to force it. Well, that's what we've said. Those interceptions out of Stephen Duncan have come when he's predetermined it and forced it. He didn't right there. Checks it down for a short loss. They go direct snap for Walker trying to move outside. He comes back inside and picks up two. Amante Caban with the tackle. Coming last up, last coming couple third downs, two. they've showed pressure. They've got out of there and played zone. So on this third and long, What's Louisville going to do? Early on in the game when they were dominant on defense, we saw them what we call the radar defense, which is nobody's got their hand on the ground. They're wandering around. They had a sack early in the game off of confusion. What is this Louisville defense going to do? And here they are back into the radar moving around. Third and nine, Duncan. Again, has his man. It's Lucky Jackson, but he coughed it up, and it's picked up by Louisville. Lucky Jackson not happy with himself. Would have been a first down, if not very close. Instead, it's a turnover for Western Kentucky, the second one of the day. Anthony Johnson recovered it. And this is an absolute field, punch to the stomach. A fumble recovered they by the defense. Everything first down they Louisville. want. A great read. He drives it to the perimeter. Lucky Jackson catches the ball away from his body. And the def defense just getting a hand in there. You're so vulnerable as a receiver when you ha don't pull the ball into your body immediately. He does here, and it just gets ripped out. Like I said, that's a punch to the stomach. They had everything they want, momentum on their side, Louisville defense on their heels, and and again, back to the third Rolling string the quarterback field, here for Louisville. A fumble and a recovery by the defense is under review. This is right on the fringe of, did he make a football move? Is it a catch? Is it not a catch? Did he ever have complete control of it before it was ripped out? So Justin Elliott will get in the headset with Britt Choate, the replay official. He talked about it. it's a great catch by Lucky. Does he try and make a football move? And does he ever have full control? And the referees are going to look at this, but let's just talk for a second. 
if, if this is overturned, okay? So it's going to be fourth and long. They're going to punt. They're going to have a chance to pin Louisville's offense down really deep. With and a they, true and we talked about it. They've talked about uh, what we talked about earlier. They they've done a great job in the kicking game. They've already punted one inside the 20. He's boomed them also. But if they can, if this gets overturned, and they can pin Louisville down inside, call it the five. You're putting this third string quarterback, Evan Conley, the freshman, in a very, very difficult spot. I think that look from the end zone that WKU was going towards is the best one we have. Scott Satterfield looking on. And we're about to get the call. I don't think there was enough there. After review, the ruling in the field is confirmed. First down Louisville. So they confirmed the call, which means they had enough evidence and they got the call right on the field. But so. they still have a true freshman who showed up today, the third string quarterback, and here he is trying to protect a 31-14 lead against a surging Western Kentucky team. Yeah, Jawan Pass did not start today. He's out with a lower body injury. Malik Cunningham was playing very well, got hit hard, lost his helmet on the last drive. Conley came in for one play. Now he gets a chance to lead one drive. He takes a shot down the middle for Atwell. And how about that for your second throw? Atwell takes it in. The true freshman. Evan Conley, wow. How fun for this guy. Has no idea he's getting on the field today. And how about the confidence of the play call? First and 10, let's let him take a shot. They got the look that they wanted. Western Kentucky expecting them to line up and run the ball and take the pressure off the true freshman. And instead, he drops back. There's nothing left. Deep over route. Massive play for this Louisville offense. Third for time Evan today. Conley. Yeah, third time today, Tutu Atwell has found the end zone. And how about that for your first collegiate completion? A 62-yard touchdown to give your team a 38-14 lead late in the third quarter. We talk about momentum swings. Louisville fumbled earlier on the first drive. Western Kentucky turned that into points after the Western Kentucky fumble on the last drive. Takes one play and Conley to Atwell, 62 yards. Yeah, it's play action. Tutu getting a step on the safety. And because you have a true freshman in there, the, these linebackers and safeties are, have got to be thinking they're going to run the ball. I love the play call. Show run, stick the ball in the running back's belly, get those safeties to just settle their feet for a second. And that's a very, very similar route that we saw Tutu Outwell score from the left side last time. Of he's running full speed down the field. That safety settles his feet just for a second, and that is too long when you've got the speed that Tutu Atwell does. And when we heard the T.Y. Hilton comparison, I'm, you know, a lot of times guys throw out, I used to coach this guy, and he reminds me of him, but I, you know, I, I you spent some it. time in the NFL. I see it. Stadium is your new way to watch national sports, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Live and classic games, daily live studio shows, original programming. Check your local television listings or go to watchstadium.com. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. How about Tudu Atwell today? Three catches, three touchdowns, 117 yards. Here's LaFrance, his best return of the day out past the 30. And he's down to the 32. I'm bad at math. What's Tutu Atwell averaging per catch right now? Uh, and I promise you, this is, off you the no, the this is off the top of my head, and I'm definitely not reading it off the stat monitor, but 39. All right. Impressive. But, yeah, what? I mean, we're, we're waiting to see. How are they going to get him the ball with a running quarterback in there? And now they lose their running quarterback. Tutu Atwell having a career day. You just see the speed that he has. He just runs past everybody. And as you alluded to, it's very similar to that second touchdown that he scored. The first deep ball that he caught. So how does Western Kentucky respond? Gage Walker bounces off one tackler trying to get the edge. And he's hauled down at the 39-yard line. Fago, the redshirt sophomore out of Lexington, Kentucky, former walk-on, just awarded a scholarship in the spring, makes the tackle. Yeah, tough run between the tackles. Louisville's fired up. They got a ton of momentum back after that last big play. 
They can't over pursue though. They can't bite too tight on these interior run plays and lose contain the way that they did and set up these second and shorts where they give Western Kentucky a chance to open up the playbook and, and push the ball down the field. They go to Walker again and Walker picks up the first down for the 44 yard line. Ty Tyler the transfer from Charlotte. Familiar face for Western Kentucky Tyler coming over from the 49ers. Second team all conference USA in 2018. Yeah, more Gage Walker just pounding it between the tackles. It is getting to the point in the game where we really need to do need to push the ball down the field, but you know, give them credit for not abandoning this run game. First and ten of the 44, Duncan over the middle, short, caught, and dropped to Core Pearson. Started running with it. And that's the same route they scored on that jerk route. Pearson coming from the other side, stopping hesitation. And here's an example I talked about earlier how important ball placement is. He's coming across. Got to lead him and got to put him in stride. And I also think Pearson kind of saw that defender on the outside of him, too. So it's so important to have communication and accuracy when you're throwing the ball over the middle of the field, which outside of that earlier jerk route that they did score on, they haven't really attacked the middle of the field. Should be the last play of the third quarter. Three man rush Duncan high and through the hands of Lucky Jackson although if you're Duncan you'd really love to see your That's the wide receiver one quarter. come down with that at the end of three Louisville all over Western Kentucky 38 14 15 minutes to go from Nashville. Scott Satterfield loves what he sees from his Louisville Cardinals. They're on top of Western Kentucky at the start of the fourth quarter, 38-14. Josh Appel, Jordan Palmer with you. And as Stephen Duncan comes out to lead this Western Kentucky offense on third and ten, we take a look at Tyson Helton and some of the guys that he's been able to coach and kind of mentor in his collegiate coaching career. And three guys on that screen right there that you and I know very well. Yeah, he's done a great job at developing guys. And, and this is really four different body types. This guy right here is a guy I've grown up with and trained him for the draft and spent a lot of time the last few years with and Sam can't say enough nice things about him and you know it's not a part of it is recruiting and part of it is also uh, developing them personal foul roughing the passer defense number 12 contact to the quarterback's helmet 15 yard penalty automatic first down as we see the roughing the passer penalty but with Tyson Helton you know, part of it is recruiting and part of it is the development. And you got to be tough to be able to be either of those things. And it's a good example here of Stephen Duncan hanging in there trying to complete his throwing motion. And it had to be a hit to the head. Yeah, it's got to be that. Marlon character off the corner blitz. And with the quarterbacks, you know, we heard that you see the tape, you know that with Stephen Duncan, the biggest issue is decision making. Which can that's one of the things that can be most affected by a coach. You can train that you can coach that and so he's got all the physical tools. Duncan pressured trying to scramble with it and he just throws it away. Now it'll determine whether or not he was outside the tackle box or not. Caban applying the pressure. There was a receiver in the area. There so is regardless. no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was out of the pocket and the ball and as we look to see scrimmage. where Second exactly down. this ball left from. It's close, but he, he, he's I think he's outside that box and it's a heads up play by Duncan to get rid of it. So second down and 10. When you haven't been prolific in the passing game, those big sacks, those seven, eight, nine yard sacks really are drive killers because they've been, been unable to consistently complete 10, 15, 20 yard balls. And so Smart play, heads up play by Duncan, getting rid of it. Back shoulder throw, what a catch by Lucky Jackson. Lucky Jackson doing a great job catching the ball away from his body. We saw the last series end with a drop on the sideline to his right. And here, Duncan standing in there, taking a big shot, back shoulder, Lucky Jackson. Go, go gadget arms, extend them all the way out. Put his feet in the ground. Big play. 
for this Western Kentucky offense. Western Kentucky knocking on the door of the red zone. Dumps it out. Walker picks up a handful there, brings up second down. We talk about decision making. You know, I mentioned that this is the number one area he needs to focus on. When you get down here inside the 30, it's so easy to get aggressive. He's looking left. He's got two receivers to his left. They were both covered. We're sitting up top here. For him to not try and force it, that's something he's done the last two weeks. To not force it, check it down. Now they're second and six. That's growth that I'm seeing out of Stephen Duncan. And if you're an offensive coordinator, that's really all you want to see week to week is growth out of your quarterback from a decision-making standpoint. Second time inside the red zone. Duncan, complete. Sloan trying to stretch the ball for the pylon, but he stepped out of bounds at the three. Duncan continually with guys in his face, stepping into it, driving the ball to the perimeter. This, this looks like he threw the ball 20 yards. When you're on the right hash left sideline, this is actually about a 40-yard throw, and it didn't come too far off the ground when it left his hand. That's a frozen rope, absolute dime, and he's on the same page as the receiver, and that's what they have to do, is have to put pressure on this Louisville secondary if they want the run game to work, if they want to get Gage Walker involved, and if they want to climb back in this game. A score here would certainly help. Tyson Helton said that Stephen Duncan can make every throw. He has the arm. He showed it off there. Duncan, end zone, touchdown. That's Kyle Fortenberry, the red shirt junior tight end. That's his first touchdown and the second straight season he's caught a touchdown against the Louisville Cardinals. Yeah, we've been waiting for Kyle Fortenberry to get involved and right here he's running an out route. He puts his foot in the ground, stops, and really good timing. We call that a cop route. It's a corner stop. He runs eight yards, stems to the corner, puts his foot in the ground, comes back. You have to complete that ball with timing and accuracy. Stephen Duncan does, and finally, Kyle Fortenberry getting involved. Nine plays, 68 yards, 328 off the clock, and Western Kentucky not going away quietly. 38-21, still a three-score game with 12.50 to go in the fourth quarter, but... The Hilltoppers trying to climb their way back here in Nashville. Thirty-eight twenty-one, Western Kentucky trailing Louisville with 12.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Stephen Duncan connecting with Kyle Fortenberry to inch Western Kentucky closer. Yeah, and this last drive was all Stephen Duncan. And a great job by Fortenberry. They're sending somebody to the flat. He's running a corner route, but right when he gets to the top of his corner route, he stops, he puts his foot in the ground, and Stephen Duncan drives the ball inside shoulder. Fortenberry putting the defender on his outside, and at this point, it's basketball. You're posting him up. You're going to put the defender on your outside by any means necessary. And similar to what we talked about earlier, he puts the ball with timing and accuracy onside. And Western Kentucky has it back-to-back -back weeks. The Hilltoppers have successfully converted on an onside kick. The freshman Corey Munson does it again. Recovered by Cannon Jackson, the former walk-on, just awarded a scholarship this fall. How about the aggressiveness from Tyson Helton, Louisville, for some reason not expecting an onside kick going up against a team down three scores in the fourth quarter. I love it, why not? You're aggressive. This is why Tyson Helton said he loves this interstate rivalry. He wants to play <laughs> either Louisville or Kentucky because you can get aggressive. Momentum swing here. The offense finally clicking through the air. Let's give him another chance. It's so much about possessions when you're trying to chip away at a lead. When your offense starts clicking, especially in the pass game, and you can create another possession for your offense, the momentum just so much on Western Kentucky's side right now. And this last drive was all Stephen Duncan, and I think it was two things. It was great decisions, and it was the best accuracy we've seen all day today. If he can keep that thing going, Louisville's on its heels. Quick catch from Quinn Jernigan. Duncan has hit on five of his last eight passes, including four on that scoring drive. And Western Kentucky hasn't beaten Louisville since 1975, they've lost 10 straight, and now they're trying to fight their way back here in this fourth quarter. We see the velocity there by Stephen Duncan, putting his foot in the ground and driving it. And they're gonna be shifting to hurry up here and getting, trying to get more plays off. 
That's Sloan in motion. They pitch it to him. Sloan around the corner has the first down, and he shoved that out bounds. Louisville on a six-game losing streak away from their home stadium. It's getting a little uneasy for them, especially if Western Kentucky can turn that onside kick into a touchdown. It is. And Sloan on the perimeter again. Get the ball in the hands of your playmakers and get a new set of downs as often as possible so you can continue to take shots down the field. You get in third and longs, you get limited in terms of what you can call. First and ten, when the pass game's working, it really opens things up. Duncan under center for just the second or third time today. Hit as he throws over the middle, and it's through the hands of Sloan. Anthony Johnson brought some heat to Sloan right as that ball arrived, and it's second down from the 38. Yeah, and defensive coordinator Court Dennison bringing pressure, bringing six on that play, wrapping around, putting a guy in the face. But Stephen Duncan steps in there. That's a catchable ball. Sloan's got to make that catch. But they're going to continue to be aggressive on offense right here. This is the time in the game. This is the situation. This is also the spot on the field where you get aggressive. Duncan play action. Has it tipped up in the air, and thankfully for him, that just falls harmlessly to the turf. G.G. Robinson, 6'4", 295, right in his face. Yeah, and this ball was batted down, and as a quarterback, there's not much you can do, but, you know, he's going through his progression again, and he's checking the ball down to Walker. That's, that's just a good progression by Stephen Duncan. We've seen a lot of growth, as much growth in one game, based off what we saw on tape coming into this, what the narrative is, and what the stat line says with two uh, interceptions in each of his first two games. I've seen a lot of growth today out of Stephen Duncan, and this Western Kentucky offense starting to roll. Third down, design quarterback run. Duncan, not sure of that play call on third and long. Yeah, and I think that the idea there is if you can get four or five yards and get to fourth and medium to short. But the other thing you, you risk is maybe getting your quarterback hurt. He's limping a little bit. Now it's fourth and ten. Cardinal faithful rising to their feet. Hilltopper fans hoping that this drive stays alive. Ah, movement on the right side for Western Kentucky. Ball start. Offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And I think Stephen Duncan there. Leighton is cadence seeing that they're bringing the safety down Sam linebacker down. They're about to bring a lot of pressure He may not have had enough protectors in there So when you get late in the snap count and you start to see something you want to change it You get past that point in the snap count where the offense is ready to go and we have multiple guys off sides fourth and 14 Duncan Throws Jernigan almost had it would have been a first down Anthony Johnson has been fantastic on this drive breaking up a couple of passes including that fourth down Western Kentucky turns it over on downs and Louisville back on offense. Yeah and look I'm a quarterback guy and I feel for the quarterback when the receivers are struggling to make contested catches that's a little inside it's a good play by the corner. But Western Kentucky not able to finish off these contested catches. 10, rather, 10.29 to go in the fourth quarter, 38-21, Louisville on top. Well, in the open, we highlighted our players to watch today, and we picked four good ones because all four have come to play this afternoon. Tutu Atwell, three touchdowns, three receptions, 117 yards for Louisville. He's been the game-breaker for them. And then Devin Key, eight tackles and a fumble recovery on defense for Western Kentucky. First down, handoff, right side, Hawkins, down the sideline, Hawkins, as a flag comes in. This little looks like it's coming back. There are two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Holding, number eight, is the climb. Holding, number 27 is accepted. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Tobias Little and Keon Wakefield both called for holding. They accept the one on Tobias Little. And 
and get another look at it here. Yeah, no wonder there's that much space. As he gets to the second level, there's a couple different holes he could run through, but they were illegal ones. And right now, for this Louisville offense, this offensive line and JV and Hawkins, the running back, they've got to sit here and say, hey, look, we got a true freshman in the game. He's done everything we've asked with a huge play last quarter. We've got to be able to line up, run the ball, and not get in long-distance situations. They go to Hawkins again. Very similar play to the one that just got called back. And then Hawkins walks over the defender on that Western Kentucky sideline. And he's going to get flagged for unsportsmanlike. Can't walk over a defender and then flex your arm is right in front of the official. That's going to get you a flag every time, especially in college. Especially down 17. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number 10, his first. 15-yard penalty to be second down. And coming off the point that I just made, this is exactly what you can't do, which you're going to put this true freshman quarterback in a situation where he's going to have to make a play on third down. And I know he had a great touchdown pass to 2-2 Atwell earlier, but that was on first and 10 in their territory with the big lead and a lot of momentum. See Scott Satterfield not happy as Hawkins comes off. His position coach telling him, just come back. Don't need all that extra stuff. By the way, Louisville 97 total yards of offense in this second half and just three first downs. Similar to like Western Kentucky in the first half when 77 of their 125 came on one play. 62 of the 97 for Louisville in this half have come on one play as a, yet another flat comes in in the offensive backfield. It's second and 26 right now. Holding. Offense, number 75. Penalties declined. Brings up third down. And it'll be about third down and 25 now after that. It'll be third down and 26 officially. We almost saw third, second down and 36. It was against yeah, Robbie Bell. This is a drive killer. At this point, Louisville's offense, get a piece back, play the field position game. Don't put the true freshman in a situation where he's got to Roll the dice and take a chance. Conley, the true freshman, drops to throw. Fires, has Atwell, and Atwell is close to a first down. He might have picked it up. They'll mark him about a yard shy. They needed 26. They got 24. And now Louisville will go for it. And how about the true freshman? I'll admit it, I'm wrong. I'm expecting a run play and a punt. And he just steps in the pocket, drives the ball down the field. Tutu Atwell finding the void in the zone coverage. And he's confident in that receiver. And why wouldn't you be having a career day? How about the moxie of having Conley here in this fourth quarter? And now on fourth and two from the 49, Scott Satterfield wants to talk this one over a little bit more. Time out. Louisville, their final. If you're Scott Satterfield, are you going for it here? We'll find out. We'll find out. 38-21. Stadium is your new way to watch national sports. The only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. You can see live and classic games, daily live studio shows, and original programming. Check your local television listings or go to watchstadium.com. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. So Scott Satterfield, Jordan, still deciding whether or not he wants to go for it on fourth and two. You said before we took a break that you would. Why? Well, you got a true freshman in the game, so I'm not saying go for it because of the way the true freshman's played. But you can go ahead and put this on your offensive line and on your running back, JV and Hawkins. I said earlier, these guys have to bail out this true freshman in the second half. You can't expect him to come in. He's already played great. You can't expect him to win the game and take over and make the necessary plays. The five linemen got to make a decision that, hey, we rushed for 172 yards today. We need to rush for a couple more. JV and Hawkins had the penalty that hurt them. Offensive line held a few times on this drive. True freshman quarterbacks bailed them out. You got to put this on your O-line and say, hey, big fella's up front. 
push these guys back and let's go ahead and keep this drive going. By the way, that third down reception for Tutu Atwell gave him a new career high in receiving yards of 141. Previous was 132. Atwell in motion. The handoff to Hall up the middle, and this one's going to be close. This one is going to depend on the spot. How about this Western Kentucky defense making this close? And they do get the stop. On fourth down and two, I'm interested Hassan to see Hall right didn't get it. If Evan Conley couldn't have kept this and dove in forward for that first, first couple yards, not a runner, but with number 10 right there, angled in the way that he is. Again, you want to put it on the O line, you expect JV and Hawkins to get that. But there was an option to pull that there too. And the true freshman just, you know, this is what happens when you don't get game reps, you get thrown into this situation. I think we know what Malik Cunningham would have done right there. We know what Jawan Pass would have done right there. And I don't fault the true freshman. I would assume he's gotten little to no reps. And the big boys up front have got to be able to push that. And here they are giving the ball back to Western Kentucky, who's been moving it on offense. Duncan pressured. Duncan takes a shot. Deep has slow there. And it's just a bit overthrown. Western Kentucky wants a flag. Russ East was on the coverage. Uh, and Duncan had him. This is almost identical to the two long touchdown passes we've seen out of Tutu Atwell. You see how he bends the receiver back up the field and he's trying to reach over his shoulder. Well, unfortunately, there's nothing left in front of him. And with as strong as Stephen Duncan's arm is, you can actually throw that on a line. You can laser that one to him. It doesn't have to be with that much air and there's so much space in front of him. Missed opportunity by Stephen Duncan. Shakur Pearson takes the jet sweep. He's going backwards. He somehow spins out of it, and he's taken down for a loss of a bunch back to the 43. Dorian Etheridge cleaned it up. And Stephen Duncan is going to be kicking himself tomorrow when he watches this tape back. Those are the ones that just make your stomach hurt. I, play, I played long enough to know that uh, to have missed a bunch of wide open touchdowns and trying to get the perimeter here to Pearson, but this drive is all about the play before where just missed opportunity at a game changing touchdown. Third and 15. Duncan play action over the middle. Here's Lane and Lane hauls it in. Makes us a much more manageable fourth down try upcoming from the 44. They need about three. Make it two. It'll be fourth and two officially for Western Kentucky. And you figure if they don't get this here, this is probably it for them down three scores. Yeah, they will just substitute it out about half their defense. Look for them to bring pressure, stack the box, no safety in the middle of the field. Duncan rolls out, throws for Lucky Jackson. He makes the catch and he has the first down. So the drive and stays alive. And a gutty play by Steven Duncan here. He's limping pretty good. He's been banged up and to then be asked to take three steps, drive the ball to the sideline with accuracy. Impressive throw by Duncan on a on a gotta have it fourth down. Prior to the snap, replay initiated the review of the previous play. Wow. So before that snap was off, the replay booth buzzed down, and so they ran a play, and now they're going to review the previous one. And Tyson Helton not happy at all because obviously his team just got a conversion. Could they be reviewing here from the previous play? And why would you let them run another play? And I mentioned it earlier, going for it on fourth down. In this situation, you obviously have to, but you don't necessarily come into a game with four, five, six plays that you love on third or fourth and short. And so if this goes against Western Kentucky and they have to run another play they've really used the ones that they like and with a quarterback who's limping so you don't want to ask him to be a threat in the run game frustrating for Tyson Helton as he talks to the refs here on the sideline well you think they have to go for it again regardless of what happens here yeah they do and they've, they've just kind of used because they've gone for it in a couple of short yard situations you kind of you know you use some of the stuff you like and really limits what you can call in this situation and in a situation where you got to have it to keep this game open. So Justin Elliott on the headset with Britt Choate, the replay official, and a telltale sign usually 
If that official standing next to the white hat takes out that notepad, that usually means something is changing from the previous play. So we'll see what happens here, but an unfortunate break for Western Kentucky because regardless of what they rule on this play, they'll have to run a fourth down try again. It's worth mentioning too, we are obviously in the home of the Tennessee Titans and tomorrow is their home opener against the Indianapolis Colts. And if you've noticed throughout today's game, there are banners in both end zones of Steve McNair and Eddie George, the late great Steve McNair, and of course, Eddie George, both of them will have number nine and number 27 retired at halftime tomorrow of the Colts Titans game. Yeah, every NFL stadium has a lot of names in the ring of honor. A little shout out to my older brother, Carson Palmer, getting his name in the ring of honor in Arizona in two weeks. But when it comes to retiring jerseys, they don't do that too often. Teams don't really do that. But for very special guys and the late Steve McNair and the great Eddie George, two guys that are endemic to this community. And I played my last, the, my NFL career ended here in this stadium playing for the Tennessee Titans. And I know just how special this community is. It is Music City and it is the home of country music. But uh, there's a Tennessee Titan football team here that has a lot to play for this year. And, and uh, they had a huge win in week one versus Cleveland, which was kind of a stunner, and uh, they're going to keep it going tomorrow. Let's take a sec. Let's come back to this play I talked about with Stephen Duncan. And I, I think uh, a lot of – we'll go ahead and see what the decision here is. On the third down play, there was a personal foul for targeting. Louisville, number 38. Number 38 is disqualified. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the third down play. It'll be first down and 10 Western Kentucky at the 30 yard line. Well, I watch a lot of football Please and I have for a long time. And seven minutes and 27 seconds. That was a unique one. I don't know that I've seen that situation before. We thought that was going to work against Western Kentucky and ends up being the other way around. Here's Jack Fago. They call targeting that. That one's questionable. It's unnecessary. But, but I was expecting to see something a lot more violent than that. And Louisville has Florida State on the road next week, which means Jack Fago has to sit out the first half next week. Yeah, that's a tough break. Tough break and interesting review. Yeah, I just I just don't see that one. Scott Satterfield, of course, not happy with it. And I mean, we'll hopefully hear an explanation for that one. But. And Stephen Duncan, gutty performance. He's limping. He's fighting. And he's got an opportunity. There's signs of life here. First and ten after all of that from the 30. Duncan off play action rolls to his left had lane but he had to float it over the linebacker Nick Okiki second and ten so here's a look at that targeting call again you see Fago right there I, there was no helmet to helmet there I guess maybe contact to the head or neck area but he didn't launch himself. Yeah, so it's 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 an unnecessary hit, but surprised to see him get ejected. And like you said, he's out the first half of next week as well. First time somebody other than Gage Walker has carried the football out of the backfield. It's Josh Samuel, the redshirt sophomore out of Greenville, South Carolina. Dorian Etheridge on the stop. Correction, that was actually Keyshawn McClendon on the carry just his third touch of the year. And I think this drive is going to come down to can these receivers make a contested catch. They've made a couple and they've missed some big ones. Stephen Duncan gutting it out and these receivers make a play here. Now Western Kentucky is in field goal range. They do have a freshman kicker so interesting to see if they don't get this third down what the decision is. 
Third and four, handoff McClendon again. They won't have to decide because he picks up the first down, lowering his shoulders and rumbling down to the 15. Kane passed the brother of Juwan pass up from his safety position to make the tackle. But if you're Western Kentucky with the clock moving, it's 6.20 to go in the fourth quarter. You're down 17. The pace has to pick up a little bit here. Yeah, and I'm looking for Joshua Simon, the tight end. We saw him earlier on the 77-yard touchdown. Looking for these tight ends to get involved. We saw the touchdown last drive by Fortenberry. Pearson has it inside the 10, picks up nine to the six. You know, going back to that targeting call, all that we were told, obviously, by the official was the, the play before the fourth down is under review. And so we, there was no sense up here that targeting was anywhere on the radar of something to be reviewed in that spot. And so that's why I kind of caught everybody off guard a bit there, too. And it's not like, you know, Louisville can be upset that their player is thrown out of the game, and I think they have, have a great case for it. But at the same time, they gave up the fourth down conversion anyway on the previous play. I was trying to figure out what the review was for. Here's second and one. Duncan just throws it away into the third row. Yeah, we've talked about accuracy and decision making and another great decision. It's second down. And you're in four down territory to not try and force this in here. Something again, his coaching staff has been drilling into Stephen Duncan's head and he appears to be coachable because if it's not there, we, we always say as quarterbacks, when you get in this situation, it's touchdown, check down, throw it away. I'm either throwing a touchdown or I'm checking it down or throwing it away, and he goes to option three there, and drive continues. Third down and short. Handoff, and he is not going to get there. Stonewall at the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard. Western Kentucky now four for 15 on third down. And now... You're down 17. You're going to need a field goal at some point. Do you kick the field goal here, or do you keep the offense out there? Well, I think it all comes down to the distance to go, which looks like fourth and four, fourth and three. Do you like a play call in this situation? If you're fourth and seven, you don't like the play call, you kick it. Fourth and three, they must have something they like here. Like you said, they, they converted the last one. Four and a half to play. Duncan looking, Duncan throwing, end zone lucky. Jackson, he bottled it, and it's incomplete. And the tops turn it over on downs. Oh, and a heartbreaker for Stephen Duncan, playing through an injury, limping around. And I mentioned it a minute ago, it is going to come down to these receivers. Can they make a play for him? And unfortunately, this one was an easy one. This is an absolute dime in the corner of the end zone. That should be a routine catch for Lucky Jackson. He's made a couple of plays on the sideline, extended his arms. He had a drop earlier on a big third down in the second quarter. And the fumble. And the fumble. And when you're a quarterback and you're fighting the way that Stephen Duncan is fighting right now, giving his receivers a chance to make a play, the least you can expect is to catch the catchable ones. And that's a heartbreaker for this offense. They get all the way down inside the 10 and turn it over on downs. And now Hassan Hall burrows his way to the 15-yard line. And you don't got to tell Lucky Jackson twice. He probably knows he's had a tough day, the fifth-year senior. Gain of seven on first down brings up second and three as the clock winds down under four minutes. WKU coming up after this. Home against UAB after the bye. So they're off next weekend, and then on the 28th return home to take on the Blazers. Hassan Hall again, bottled up at the line, and he's pushed back for no gain. Louisville, they've got Florida State on the road, then home against Boston College, who got obliterated last night against Kansas. You did. Time out. Western Kentucky, they're first. It'll be 30 seconds. Take us to our Please play of the game from today, and it was a huge one. Seconds. A momentum swing at the end of the first half. This fumble return for a touchdown that made it 31-7. Yeah, and these are the ones you can't recover from. Trying to get something going. They were just clawing their way back into it.
backed up. The only thing you can't do is turn it over, and then unfortunately there's only one thing worse than a turnover, and that's a turnover for a touchdown, and uh, they went into the half with Louisville's chest bout big. And Rajay Burns, one of our key players as well before the game. And you look at Lucky Jackson's number there, numbers there, four catches for 40 yards, but with three or four drops, that could have been six, seven, eight catches for over 100 yards and certainly at least one touchdown. And for Western Kentucky, I mean, I think they got everything out of Stephen Duncan that they wanted today. But you've got to be able to help him with plays down the field. Conley on the read option. He's brought down for a loss, and that brings up fourth down D'Angelo Malone. And there's an injured top at the 10. Jeremy Darvin was slow to get up, and he's moving off here. Western Kentucky, their second. Western Kentucky calls it second timeout with 3.29 to go in the fourth quarter. Take another look. Yeah, and Evan Conley, can't say enough about the true freshman coming in, getting thrown into a situation. You know, I was impressed with Malik Cunningham getting the start today, but then to, to go to the third guy, true freshman, huge touchdown to 2 2 Atwell. He, I mean, a third and what was that, 26? Yeah. Get, to get, to make the, the throw that he did again to 2 2 Atwell, and no key decisions, no bad decisions, didn't force any balls in there. I'd like to see a little bit better ball security in that situation because you can't afford a turnover right there, but a uh, special day for the true freshman. Look at the numbers here in Malik Cunningham. 119, two touchdowns. He added 46 rushing yards as Clayton Bush falls backwards as he catches the punt inside his own 40. I want to go back to Louisville's remaining schedule. We talk about at Florida State, home against Boston College, and then a real tough stretch as they go towards the end of the year at Wake Forest, who's now 3-0, home against number one Clemson, home against number 25 Virginia, on the road at Miami, at NC State, at Syracuse, and at Kentucky to close out the year. It's a really tough schedule for Scott Satterfield and the Cardinals, but at the same time, when you look at what he's trying to build here and the type of schedule this team will play every year, we talked about it in our pre-production meetings coming in. Not too long ago, this team was a top five program. I mean, Scott Satterfield, certainly, if he does all the right things, and he's off to a great start in that sense, this team could be back to national prominence pretty soon. Yeah, they, they, they were a top five team a handful of years ago, and I think you got to really have three things to turn a program around. One, you got to be able to tell the kids that you can get them to the NFL and that you can win championships, and, and he's done that. He's put guys in the NFL from App State. And he's won championships too. You got to be able to tell the parents that their their boys are going to graduate, and he's got a great track record of graduating his guys. And then three, you got to be able to tell a big time four or five star recruit that he's got a chance to come in and start. And you look at this team. There's a lot of juniors and seniors on this team. There's opportunities for a talented true freshman to come in next year. So I think he has what it takes to be able to to recruit. He has what it takes to be able to get top tier talent there. And you know he's. He's got a great defense They're running the odd front. They've, they've been good against the run. They've created turnovers and they've had their second and third string quarterbacks play well. That just speaks to the quarterback development and they're going to get Juwan pass back who doesn't really turn it over much. And you start to look at those that schedule the Clemson's. And all that, yeah, I mean that seat may look a long ways off but anybody can beat anybody on a Saturday and if you don't turn it over make big plays and create turnovers on defense. I think Louisville, and I said this, I, I had Kansas week one, and I came out of my experience at Kansas saying, these guys are actually not that far away. They're going to get a big win or two, and we saw them get that last night versus Boston College. And I, I'm going to say the same thing about Scott Satterfield and Louisville. They're going to they're win games like today, and they got to clean some things up, no doubt, but they're going to win a game or two that a lot of people don't think that they should. And uh, I have big expectations for this team this year. Again, that, this is a team that was picked to finish last in the ACC. As this fourth down throw from Duncan over the middle to Sloan is incomplete. Tyson Helton is livid on the sideline. He wanted pass interference. But again, Western Kentucky turns it over on downs with 2.59 to go in the fourth. And obviously the ACC, a very strong conference now with Clemson 
the class of college football, but Wake goes off to a 3-0 start. This is the Atlantic Division. you got NC State, Florida State still trying to figure it out. Dino Babers at Syracuse coming off of a, a really lopsided loss last week. They're hoping to get back into it, but Louisville, there's some talent here, and Scott Satterfield knows how to coach them up. Now you look at what Court Dennison and Brian Brown, the co-defensive coordinators, what they're doing defensively. There's a lot of promise in this program. We were talking before the game, too. Here's the Coastal and the ACC. But we were talking, and <laughs> there's a lot of depth issues on this team because, you know, with any staff turnover, you're going to have players who transfer out and transfer in and things like that. There's six new transfers that were brought in this year, but 20-ish guys left after the season last year to move on to other things. And so there's a lot of opportunity, as you said, for other guys to come in. And this program certainly has the support of a fan base, certainly has the support of the athletic department, and they've got a head coach now who became the first head coach ever to lead a school from FCS to the FBS level and go to three straight bowls right away. He's a proven winner. Yeah, he has. He's had three 10-win seasons at App State. And again, these guys are not that far removed from national prominence and being really good. And you talk about that fan base. I mean, what a cool place to play in, in Louisville and obviously a big basketball school, but they rally behind it. You know, they had a Heisen winner not too long ago. They put a lot of guys in the NFL. And I, I just look at the ACC and outside of just Clemson, everybody's West beatable Kentucky. on any given They're Saturday final. there. And, I, and I'm not saying Clemson's seconds. not because in years the past, they've, they've lost a game late in the season. I remember Deshaun Watson's junior year when they won the national championship. They lost to Syracuse late in the year. And uh, everybody really is beatable in this ACC team, uh, ACC conference. And, and Louisville's the type of team you don't want to play. When you have a quarterback who doesn't really turn it over, he can run it and throw it. And talking about Juwan Pass and you got 2-2 two -two out well that can score and they're going to get him. They're just going to continue to get on the ball different ways. And then this defense, I mentioned what scheme that they are is the the, the confusing on third down defense with playmakers on the back end. This is a tough defense to play. And now on the other side for Western Kentucky and Tyson Helton, you can see that plays are there to be made. They've got a, a, a tough schedule ahead of them as well. And there's a lot of uh, beatable teams in Conference USA, but as you said earlier, this conference is one of the most wide open conferences in all of college football. And there are some tough games on there for them. They go to Arkansas in November. At least they're home against Middle Tennessee, but they've got Army who gave Michigan a scare in overtime last week and a couple weeks coming up. UAB, since they've been brought back, they've been a fantastic program. And so where does Western Kentucky go from here? Well, we said in the beginning that both these programs are in similar position with first-year head coaches, but a lot of what I just said about Louisville, I would say about Western Kentucky too. They've got a quarterback who I think took a major step in his career today. Agreed. He's been turning it over. And yeah, he had a sack fumble for a touchdown, and that was a tough one, but he's not a runner. Right. You know, that, that was a, you know, he, he fumbled and he shouldn't, but th they're not asking him to have the ball in his hands a whole lot. They're asking him to drop back there and throw it, and I thought today, I thought he played great. Battling through an injury, we saw him limping, gutty performance, he got hit a lot early, made a lot of plays down the field, and he continued to make plays, even though his receivers didn't always help him out. They did make a few catches, but man, did they miss a couple. And, uh, I think they've really found a quarterback in Steven Duncan. They've got to be able to get Gage running the ball. Gage Walker we came in today, back-to-back 100-yard -back games. He was quiet. And the defense has got to be more stout versus the run. But I look at this Western Kentucky defense, and I go, man, there's a lot to like here as you look at them against Conference USA talent. And I, you know, I come from Conference USA. It's a winnable conference. Anybody who can play with discipline, run the ball, and play defense is going to have a chance to compete for a championship. And I think Tyson Helton has a, a lot of stuff to clean up, but he's got a lot of stuff to be excited about. Cardinals now over 400 yards in total offense after that run from Hawkins. He's got 17 carries, 86 yards, and a touchdown. Louisville's rushed for over 200 yards today. But I'm with you. If, if you're a Western Kentucky fan and you're Tyson Helton, obviously this isn't the result that you would have hoped for, but at the same time, you went down 31-7. You made this a competitive game in the second half, and there were opportunity again for plays to be made as Hawkins gets inside the 10. He's brought down at the 8-yard line as we close in on a minute to go in this fourth quarter. Yeah, they had a huge deficit coming out of half. You look, go back to the, we're going into half. The fumble for a touchdown. Backbreaker. All momentum is with Louisville. And they come back in on defense, Western Kentucky. 
forces a turnover, drives down and scores with a touchdown pass. Score again on a big play. They kept fighting this whole game. Stephen Duncan, I'm impressed. Zero turn, zero interceptions today. He's got four in the last two games. Zero today. Should have had four touchdowns too. Absolutely. Should have had another 50 to 80 yards passing and another touchdown or two. And they just showed that the defense showed some fight when they created the turnover and they kept bouncing back. As did Stephen Duncan in this offense. I think both teams leaving today have a lot of stuff they got to clean up. But again, I think they've got a lot of stuff that they can build on as they head into conference play. A lot of respect between those two head coaches as Louisville and Western Kentucky comes to an end here from Nissan Stadium. The final Louisville 38, Western Kentucky 21. The Cardinals improved to two and one. Western Kentucky falls to one and two. Jordan, just get some of your final thoughts here. Obviously, Louisville came in without their starting quarterback. Malik Cunningham starts the game, plays very well. He gets knocked out of the game. True freshman Evan Conley comes in. His first ever completion goes for 62 yards and a touchdown to Tudu Atwell. He was fantastic today. Four receptions, a career high 141 yards, career high three touchdowns, and a career high and longest catch in that 62 yard score. Yeah, I think moving forward, Louisville, as they head into the schedule that you referenced, can they continue to run the ball the way that, that they did today? They did it against Western Kentucky's defense. Can they continue to do that against ACC defenses? And for Western Kentucky, can these receivers start making more plays consistently for Stephen Duncan? And can Stephen Duncan continue to make great decisions? I thought today he was accurate with the football, but he just made great decisions. He didn't force anything. He checked it down. Turnovers is so often the decisive, the decision-making factor in winning. And, uh, and can both teams do those things if they can? Uh, these the programs turning around are heading in the right direction. Jordan and I will be back in just a moment to wrap things up for you here from Nissan Stadium. We'll also tell you who our player of the game is. That's coming up next here from Nashville. That man right there, Tutu Atwell, instrumental in Louisville's 38-21 victory at Nissan Stadium today over Western Kentucky. Louisville snaps a six-game losing streak away from home with the victory today, improving to 2-1. A lot of options today, but I feel like Tutu Atwell is the easy decision. Four receptions, a career-high 141 yards, a career-high three touchdowns for our player of the game. Yeah, and they all came at big time. He had a big third down, and the touchdown was a huge huge moment in the game with the true freshman Evan Conley coming in and hitting him for the big play and one of the best things you can have if you're an offensive coordinator building an offense is just somebody that you can move around all over the place and if you get him in space he can make a play it's great to run the ball it's great to have a quarterback with a strong arm but when you have a playmaker that you can move around and get him the ball different ways not just line him up and run fades but move him around the way that we did we saw jet sweeps we saw over routes. We saw huge plays down the field, and it's the best thing you have. Well, that'll do it for us here from Nashville. An exciting one and a big win for Louisville. For my broadcast partner, Jordan Palmer, I'm Josh Appel saying good night from Nashville, Tennessee, where your final score is Louisville 38, Western Kentucky 21. For more live games, replays of classic games, and daily original studio programming, visit watchstadium.com or search stadium and your local channel guide.